Chapter 1676. Instant Reversal. Although King Shui had sustained some injuries, he still felt very happy. After all, this time around, he still had some confidence to be coming this time around. As long as he could stand his ground, it would be hard to tell who the victor would be. King Shui's greatest ability was to control the arena, including for other people and for himself. Right now, he couldn't manage to take care of the Dark Phoenix and Long Zhuer at the greatest extent possible, but he could still provide some help for them. Moreover, the battle situation on their side was very stable and the true deciding factor of the victory was between himself and the old man. Surprise! This is really a surprise. I'm considered to be the top three in the Demonic Saber Immortal sect, yet I wasn't able to take you down even after using the immortal slaying god killing blow. The old man looked at King Shui as if he was smiling but yet not quite so. King Shui still wasn't sure if the old man was the head of the demonic saber immortal sect, but at his level, he was definitely someone with significant authority in the sect. Even if he was not the leader, he wouldn't be much worse off. In many sects, the leader wasn't the wielder of authority and some important things still required the decision of some old ancestor level characters. As for the other matters, unless it concerned the life and death of the sect, the sect lord could call the shots. There was still the Elder Association and Supreme Grand Elder Association and such above the sect lord. Although these groups didn't hold as much power as the sect lord, they can often affect the sect lord's decision. There are many cases where once the sect grows stronger, they would become lost and lose their previous beliefs. The rules of the heavenly Tao can't be broken and there's karma in life, so you reap what you sow. What do you think? King Shui's body had already recovered and he looked at the old man and said slowly. When the old man heard the term, heavenly Tao, his countenance appeared to be a little grim. This was something that was unexplainable yet actually existed. Karma was also something that existed. Although it was a little mysterious, it was true. One would reap what was sowed. If a person did a lot of good deeds, when he were to be in trouble, the chances of the person receiving help would definitely be a lot greater than people who kept on committing evil deeds. Right now, King Shui was saying that what the demonic saber immortal sect was doing was an evil deed, something that went against the heavenly Tao, the rules of the world. It wasn't something that should be done. In the world of the nine continents, once the heavenly Tao was involved, the person would feel a tremendous amount of pressure. Lad, we're on opposing ends and this has nothing to do with the heavenly Tao. When you guys did those things previously, didn't you think about karma? I'm answering to the heavenly Tao. Everyone would have to be responsible for the things that they do. What do you think about this? The old man shook his head and regained his composure. There are good and evil in this world, and everything is differentiated by just a single thought. Make your move. I must have been muddled to discuss about the good and evil with you. There's no other reason why I said these, because it's an easy feat for me to kill you. King Shui locked onto the old man with his sharp gaze. Ha ha ha. The old man broke out into a loud laughter. King Shui looked at the old man calmly. Is it really that funny? Have you ever thought of the possibility of meeting unexpected failures? Do you know that no matter who they were up against, a cultivator should never be careless? Things will take a turn around when it reaches an extreme. After saying that, King Shui made his move and his silhouette left a golden line trailing behind him. This was a unique attack of the golden battle god, the heavenly god Shadow Reversal. Paragon Strike King Shui struck out his most powerful attack with his golden battle halberd. His movement techniques from earlier had created the best conditions for himself. The old man's pupils contracted as thin as a needle's tip, 
shooting out a cold gleam that seemed as if it was material. God immortal annihilation combinative attack. At this moment, the old man had given up on defending and decided to strike out with all of his power in this one attack. Boom! A huge sound rang out and forces were shot out from the repercussions of the collision. Brilliant golden light shot out in all directions, and both King Shui and the old man were sent flying out. However, at the moment that King Shui's body flew out, he once again charged over instantly. Paragon Golden Armor. That brilliant golden light was King Shui's golden armor. Even with King Shui's powerful defense, he was still pushed to be on the verge of death. After all, the old man had gone all out in that attack. It was an all-out attack, even more terrifying than before when he had already been stronger than the old man to begin with. However, the old man hadn't expected that King Shui would have an ultimate technique to protect himself. The Golden Armor's ability to fend off one lethal attack each day was definitely a paragon technique. It was definitely extremely rare for people to have such an ultimate technique to protect themselves. Compared to King Shui, the old man wasn't as lucky. For his all-out attack to be stopped, and for his body to be struck by King Shui's most powerful attack when it was as its weakest. The result was horrendous. King Shui's paragon strike was extremely powerful. Even the old man couldn't fend off an attack that was six times more powerful than King Shui's strength. Moreover, this was when the old man's condition was relatively weaker. Therefore, this blow was lethal. However, relying on his rich experience, he managed to dodge the lethal blow. However, it was useless. King Shui's attack crushed his shoulders and smashed all the meridian channels in his body. The old man felt that his powers were gushing out for eternity from his body like seawater. King Shui was stunned by this as well. It was because he realized that the golden battle halberd could have a certain change in destroying the opponent's body completely. If King Shui were to save the old man right now, he would be able to save half of the old man's cultivation. The world of the Danshan and Meridian channels were the forbidden areas for alchemists and physicians. Right now, even if there was a powerful physician or alchemist, they would still be helpless. The old man's current situation was the equivalent of someone having contracted an incurable disease. To a cultivator, their cultivation was even more important than their lives. If the old man was made to live his remaining life just like an ordinary person, he'd rather die. To a cultivator, hard work and difficulty was nothing. As long as one had their cultivation, everything was possible. However, without their powers, and to not have even the hope of regaining it, then there would be no more hope in his life. King Shui looked at the old man's forlorn expression. His cultivation had seeped out to its final bit. King Shui hadn't thought of providing him with treatment. To pity the opponent, to show mercy to the enemy, would be sacrificing yourself. It didn't take long, but only King Shui knew of the dangers involved. Even the Paragon Golden Armor had appeared. If he didn't have the Paragon Golden Armor, the result today was likely to end with both parties perishing. It was only with the Paragon Golden Armor that King Shui was able to perform even better. Without it, it would be really hard to tell who the winner would be. Both the Dark Phoenix and Long Zhue were still engaged in an intense battle. However, it was a pity that the result in the fight here had already affected the other side. The other two old men were already seized by terror. It was because when the old man had lost to King Shui, their fates were already decided. In a battle, the one thing that one should avoid the most was to be distracted. The two old men knew this. But in such a situation, it was extremely hard for them to not be distracted. 
A simple negligence caused the old man on the right to be entangled by one of Long Zhu's venomous thread. Then, he was wrapped up into a dumpling. It was already impossible for him to change his fate. The more powerful King Shui became, the more he realized how fragile life was. This was the strongest enemy the King Shui had ever encountered. However, it was also the shortest battle he had ever fought in. The time spent was extremely short. Anger chain slash. Just then, the other old man slashed out wildly toward the dark phoenix who was in the sky. However, King Shui wasn't very worried. It was because he could trust the dark phoenix's defense. At the very least, the dark phoenix wouldn't sustain serious injuries. Chapter 1677. Things aren't over. Boom boom. A series of explosive sounds rang out up above and air currents gushed through the sky. It was a pity for the dark phoenix that his opponent had only been inflicted with some minor injuries. The dark phoenix was very resistant toward attacks, but his attacking prowess wasn't that high. However, while in the nine phantom condition, its attack still wasn't considered bad. The result of the battle was decided. The battle had ended. King Shui didn't leave any of them alive. The old man had taken his own life, while the other two had been killed by Long Zhu'e and by King Shui. This time around, the demonic saber immortal sect lost three powerful cultivators. Plus the ones from before, they had really lost a lot. Right now, the demonic saber immortal sect wasn't only at the level of suffering from fractures or pulled muscles. Their situation could be compared to having lost an arm or something that was even more serious. Yin Sha, Qing Feng, Ming Yu and the others hadn't taken part in this fight. When King Shui came down, when he saw their agitated expressions, he smiled, Aunt Feng, thankfully we managed to tide through this. At this moment, Feng Shi was so happy that her feelings couldn't be described using words. She reached out her hand to pat King Shui on the shoulder, unable to say anything. She wasn't the only one like this. Even Yin Tian and Old Wang were the same. It was because they knew that it would be too excessive for them to offer their thanks. In such a situation, saying thanks wasn't enough for them to express themselves. Therefore, it was better off for them to not say anything. Tan Tai Lingyan looked at King Shui and smiled happily with a soft gaze. Did you get hurt? King Shui went up to embrace Tan Tai Lingyan. When everyone saw this couple, they really thought that the two of them were a match made in heaven, and were looking at them with warm smiles. They hoped from the bottom of their hearts that King Shui and Tan Tai Lingyan would be the most blissful they could be. How could I? Your husband's body is very strong. King Shui whispered to her ears softly and said, smiling. Tan Tai Lingyan had been with King Shui for a long time and knew that this guy must have a hidden meaning behind his words. However, it was in moments like this that she felt happier. It meant that he was really fine. They know that you're my husband. There's no need to keep re-emphasizing it. Tan Tai Lingyan said. I'm not saying this for them. Be good. Come, call me husband. King Shui smiled and said. Many of King Shui's women knew this address and what it meant. King Shui had been to a lot of places in this world, but hadn't heard of anyone using the exact same term. Cut that out, or else, I'll beat you. Tan Tai Lingyan said in a soft voice. Hitting someone means that you care for them. There's no need to go to the trouble. Just a kiss will do. King Shui enjoyed the warmth between them now. All right, they're all around. Be good, Tan Tai Lingyan said softly. Her tone, as if she was pacifying a child, seemed to have an amazing charm. King Shui was stunned for a moment and then broke out into a smile and whispered next to her ear, in the future, when we have a kid of our own, 
I must have a look at the sight of you carrying the kid. It'll definitely be very beautiful. Tan Tai Lingyan's heart skipped a beat and she pushed away King Shui, a face a little flushed. She glared at King Shui and walked over to Feng Shi, feeling embarrassed. Did he bully you? Let Godmother stand up for you. Feng Shi smiled and asked Tan Tai Lingyan, Aunt Feng, I can't bear to bully her. Let's head back first. King Shui proposed. They had been standing here for very long and there were already people who had started to clean up the scene. No one had any objections. Feng Shi waved toward the people from the Divine Moon Immortal sect who were in the surrounding, indicating for them to be dispersed. This battle had raised the morale of the people from the Divine Moon Immortal sect by a lot, and they were now full of confidence in life. Earlier, they had to put in a lot of determination to decide to stay. It hadn't been that easy. Right now, not even 1% of the Divine Moon Immortal Sect's members had stayed. 99% of them had already left. There was still quite a number of them who had stayed since the massive Divine Moon Immortal Sect had quite a large number of members. Even 1% of them all was still a considerable number. These were the core disciples and those who could stay, would further become the greater core members amongst the core. Humans needed hope. Without hope, all would be gloomy. With hope, it was as if there was a sun and the entire world would become slightly brighter. Throughout the day, lively and happy sounds came from the Divine Moon Immortal Sect. The people who had came from the Demonic Saber Immortal Sect had basically all died. However, King Shui guessed that there might have been two or three of them who had managed to return to the Demonic Saber Immortal Sect to give their reports. King Shui washed up and then since it was about time, everyone had their meal together. This time around, they didn't say anything about the Demonic Saber Immortal Sect anymore and purely had their meal. It was because, right now, King Shui was the only one who could handle the situation. All the rest of them weren't strong enough. Since they didn't have the capability, then there wasn't a need for them to bring up the matter. The meal ended very quickly. After they were done with their meal, King Shui and Tan Tai Lingyan took their leave. Time was getting increasingly precious as no one knew what would happen next. This time was what King Shui had fought for them and it was extremely precious. All the others knew that right now, King Shui and Tan Tai Lingyan didn't wish to be disturbed. This matter shouldn't be over yet. King Shui, I'm very worried. Tan Tai Lingyan walked next to King Shui as they headed back to their place. King Shui took her warm hand and shook his head. You must be confident in your man. I'm being serious. Can you be a little more serious? Tan Tai Lingyan said angrily. Earlier on, that old man said that he is from the top three in the Demonic Saber Immortal Sect. I don't know if he's the third, but he's definitely not the first. Therefore, the Demonic Saber Immortal Sect definitely still have other experts. However, they might not necessarily come. King Shui gave it some thought and said, the Demonic Saber Immortal Sect's losses are considered to be great as well. Would they be willing to bear with this loss? Tan Tai Lingyan shook her head, disagreeing. It's never too late for a gentleman to seek revenge after ten years. These people aren't gentlemen and thus it wouldn't be considered long even if they were to come back 800 or even 1000 years later. I won't be surprised even if they don't seek revenge either. They still have their family. The more the situation turned out like this, the more they wouldn't be willing to risk it. It's because if they end up losing, they would lose everything. What do you think? King Shui smiled and said. Tan Tai Lingyan was a little stunned. She thought of herself and the Five Tiger Immortal Sect. It had been so many years. Although she knew that the Five Tiger Immortal Sect was involved, 
if she were to go now, she'd be courting death. Therefore, it wasn't an intelligent decision. Moreover, she now had a little bit more things that she was concerned about. Then are we going to keep staying here? If we are no longer here, do you think that they'll vent their anger on Godmother and the others? They aren't idiots. Moreover, in most situations, people wouldn't bring the family into the picture. This is especially when they aren't clear of the situation yet. If required, yes, it makes sense to get rid of everyone completely, removing even the roots. If I'm not dead, then they wouldn't be that foolish to try to wipe out the Divine Moon Immortal Sect. King Shui said with great confidence. That's true. Then do you think that we can already leave? Tan Tai Lingyan smiled and said. She now had more a lot more smiles on her face, and King Shui was often able to see her smile that was like the winter's sunlight, emerging from the blossoming flowers. However, King Shui was the only one who could see this smile. It was only when she was with King Shui that her smile would be the most sincere, and it was so beautiful that it could even bring the fall of a city. King Shui was a little in a daze as he looked at her unparalleled beauty that was just right before him. He didn't feel any greed, but there was love that was deep as the ocean, seeping right down to his bones. Tan Tai Lingyan felt a little uneasy when King Shui was looking at her like this. Chapter 1678, Enhancing the Foundation. Seeing her expression, King Shui held her and walked around slowly. He didn't overly force her. Even until now King Shui still didn't pressure her excessively. Only by gradually inducing her passion, eventually, she would burst it all out. Although we're expecting each other not to come back in the soonest future, we should still stay a little longer, King Shui smiled. Hmm, I think so too. Why would you want to go back? King Shui asked while strolling. It's the same everywhere. Actually there's no place that I'm exceptionally reluctant to leave. It's good here. It's good in Demon Lord Palace too, as well as Linhai Imperial Cuisine Hall, Tantai Lingyan smirked, gazing far away. At that moment, she couldn't hide her sight of loneliness, despite being much faded than before. King Shui felt deeply sorry looking at her, but he couldn't express it. He embraced her tenderly and empathetically. Am I very pitiful? Tantai Lingyan whispered after she apparently felt King Shui's empathy. No one in this world could sympathize you no one deserves to. I just feel a bit hurtful and sorry. I must have accumulated merits in past life, so God sent me to protect you by your side. I will hold you tight. Lingyan, promise me not to leave me no matter what. We'll face it together, all right. King Shui actually sensed ambiguity in her words, as if she'd disappear any time. That made him extremely worried. Really? Tan Tai Lingyan raised her head and stared at King Shui. Yes, for real, absolutely, King Shui said in a serious tone. Piffed, Tan Tai Lingyan chuckled gently, her fresh breaths burst on King Shui's face. It was aromatic and soft. King Shui realized that he couldn't resist this woman at all. He lost his self-control again. Even my bones are melted, you took away my spirit. Let me taste some sweetness. King Shui snapped out and said rascally. He held her close and tight in his embrace. My mind is a total mess now, you silly. Tan Tai Lingyan murmured, leaning her forehead against King Shui's forehead. She could sense King Shui's feelings. Tip of King Shui's nose pressed against Tan Tai Lingyan's nose. King Shui had his heart racing wildly and uncontrollably. Yet, he could remain calm and appreciate this moment of precious serenity. Looking into her captivating, half-opened beautiful eyes, a slight tinge of redness on her jade-like complexion, King Shui leaned over with his lips. In fact, their lips were just an inch away. 
He leaned over at an extremely slow pace, literally giving time for Tan Tai Lingyan to void it. Yet, deep down he was anticipating that she wouldn't void it. As he felt the delicate feeling and refreshing fragrance, he saw those gently closed, beautiful eyes. He kissed her deeply and slowly, seriously, meticulously. At once, King Shui felt as if the pores all over his body open up. The spiritual and physical impact made his blood racing speedily in the whole body. Tan Tai Lingyan tensed her entire body and clenched tightly. She didn't know where to place her hands. Even her lovely little ears flushed to become adorable pink. King Shui gently sucked and bit her delicate lips. His tongue swept through her scallop-like teeth. His hands caressed her tiny waist softly. Yet, he dared not to cross the border. King Shui sensed that her patience was built up to its limit. Any of his subsequent action would trigger her fierce response. Thus, he kept the pace slow and did not bluntly advance. King Shui pulled his head away slightly. Was it enough? Tan Tai Lingyan's alluring and enchanting face blushed even more. Her lovely charm was fatal. King Shui showed her with his actions immediately. He leaned over and kissed again as she finished her words. His flexible tongue intruded her mouth swiftly and chased after her soft, squishy tongue skillfully. After some time, Tan Tai Lingyan pushed King Shui away, slightly panting. She glanced at King Shui half pleased and half annoyed. Gave you an inch, now you want a mile. You're my woman, I'm pampering my woman, how is that inappropriate? King Shui smiled mischievously. King Shui, godmother is worried about their injuries, when will they recover? Tan Tai Lingyan shook her head, avoiding the topic. One month, at least one month. Then, let's stay here for a month, all right. Of course, I'm all right with anything you said. The following days were tranquil and peaceful. King Shui spent his days comfortably too. Despite the fact that he and Tan Tai Lingyan still didn't break the final wall of relationship. Yet, it's only right now that they could be regarded as an actual couple. Even though everything had happened when they first met, but that was an accident. It had been over 20 years already. This woman was only a girl in King Shui's eyes. Ying Tian and Lao Wang had almost recovered from their injuries, but still required some time to be fully healed. Basically, they had no major problems anymore at the moment. Time flew even though it's a one-month period. King Shui felt really great within this month. This was the first month that he and Tan Tai Lingyan defined their relationship. It was a spiritual breakthrough. Their physical contact remained at kissing. King Shui did not advance anymore. Though he was not a Romeo, he felt the fluctuation of Tan Tai Lingyan's heart. It might be related to the incident that happened when they first met. Thus, he knew that he still needed time to open up her heart gradually and naturally. One month later, King Shui passed a letter to Ying Tian before he left, asking him to deliver this letter to the men of Demonic Saber Immortal Sect if they were to come. King Shui's letter was only to allow him to know his existence. Since they didn't come, it proved his previous prediction right. So, this letter would serve its purpose by then. Girl, King Shui, you have to be careful on your journey, said Feng Shi heavy-heartedly. Godmother, you have to take care too. We'll visit you after some time, Tan Tai Lingyan said to Feng Shi. Ying Tian, along with other men from Divine Moon Immortal Sect sent King Shui and Tan Tai Lingyan far away, until they could no longer see their shadows. Ying Tian heaved a sigh, looking at Feng Shi, Ying Sha, and the others, he was emotionally stirred. He wouldn't have had everything he had today if it was not because of King Shui. He was rescued by King Shui again and again. And this time, 
Even the whole Divine Moon Immortal sect was saved. He knew his entire family could never return the favor. Hence, he stopped thinking how to repay that kindness. He was a wise man, so was Feng Shi. They knew the background of Tan Tai Lingdian and recognized what they ought to do. It'd be King Shui and Tan Tai Lingyan's home here, it'd also be a foundation. He must enhance this foundation. Chapter 1679 Back to Sunset Sea King Palace, Ocean Domain, Main Continent. King Shui and Tan Tai Lingyan went on their return journey. Both of them didn't feel good in their hearts, because the case of Demonic Saber Immortal Sect wasn't really over. The spark could reignite any time in the future. King Shui had many thoughts in his mind too. Previously there was Fiver Tigers Immortal Sect. Now there's Demonic Saber Immortal Sect. They were of Divine's grade and were both enemies, in which forthcoming confrontation was expected. It's bustling and lively in Linhai City now that Demon Lord Palace had already moved here. King Shui had other plans seeing that there shouldn't be any events for some time on this quiet side. He wanted to look around the Northern Sea and visit the Sunset Sea King Palace. King Shui and Tan Tai Lingdian were back to check out Demon Lord Palace. Qin King, Hua Rume, and Zan Yu were there along with the others. Everything went smooth and steady. They spent a few days there before returning to the Imperial Dining Hall. King Shui couldn't stop now. He had tons of things to be done. After staying in Linhai City for few days, Yin Tong and Lan Lingfeng had improved tremendously. However, they still needed some time and fortuitous encounter to break through and achieve divine. It had been a while since he left. For warriors, a year or so was considered as a short duration, even ten years or twenty years. Nevertheless, occasionally, it's the crucial time for transformations within three months, two months, or even one month. Three days later, King Shui showed up in the Divine Cave. It had been emptied out here. The two mistresses must have abandoned this place for a while. Looking at this familiar place, King Shui felt warm in his heart. This was a very important spot for King Shui, a spot led by the Five Elements Divine Flag and the fastest route for King Shui to reach Haohan Continent. Everything was clean and untainted by a speck of dust. The soulful atmosphere in the air was still so dense. The mistresses were not around, both of them, should be three of them since their Sunset Palace mistress too now. All of them were not here. King Shui was pleased when he thought of the three mistresses who were together and all possessed strengths of divine. There are also a few strong and powerful beasts. After all, he was not too worried about this place. Nobody could threaten him as long as they didn't go to the Northern Sea. After staying for a moment, King Shui rushed to the Sunset Sea King Palace. It's quite far the distance from here to Sunset Sea King Place, but it's only about a day's journey for King Shui's speed. Paragon Water Flight King Shui advanced in the water swiftly. He got closer and closer to Sunset Sea King Palace. His heart stirred up as he got nearer to the destination. He knew Ye Jiang was the source of this excitement. This woman had become his wife now, she was her woman. It's already the next morning when King Shui arrived at the Sunset Sea King Palace. In spite of his long absence, he was still the guardian of Sunset Sea King Palace. He wasn't afraid of not being able to enter since he held the guardian's token. However, he didn't expect the guards to know his existence and bowed to him as they saw him. A butler came to meet King Shui and sent his man to inform the three mistresses. The mistresses were overjoyed upon hearing King Shui's arrival. They appeared in front of King Shui rapidly. Their beauty remained the same. Looking at three graceful and charming ladies, 
King Shui could only have his eyes on Yi A Jiang alone. You're here. Yi A Jiang came forward to King Shui gladly. There was slight tenderness and warmth like Qin King in her mystical scent. King Shui stepped forward and held her. It's a normal act since their husband and wife. Yi A Jiang felt awkward as Miyun Chinge and Sunset Palace mistress were around. Miyun Chinge smiled as she observed both of them cuddling. Sunset Palace mistress smiled too, but with slight disappointment in her eyes. I'm back. I miss you dearly. King Shui grinned. Yi A Jiang blushed a little. She whispered, I miss you too. After hugging for a while, Yi A Jiang pushed King Shui away lightly. King Shui only greeted the other two mistresses then. King Shui sensed upsetness from Sunset Palace mistress's expression as he greeted them. He knew this woman liked him and she'd confessed it more than once. Perhaps because of Yi A Jiang now, she didn't hug King Shui like she wouldn't used to before. Yi A Jiang smiled. In fact, she understood everything. She discussed with Sunset Palace Lord and Miyun Chinge before that she's not King Shui's only woman, so they didn't have to mind her feelings. Frankly what that meant was, it's not significant for him to own both of them or to live without them. Of course, Yi A Jiang took it lightly and said that jokingly. She could notice that Sunset Palace mistress was fond of King Shui. As the days passed by, they had become as close as sisters. Hence, she understood it when she saw Sunset Palace mistress behaving that way and shared her thoughts. Nevertheless, it's up to them to decide what to do. Yi A Jiang didn't mind how many women there were around King Shui. She definitely wished for King Shui's only love, yet, those were merely thoughts. Moreover, she got over the matter and accepted the way it was at the moment. She liked him, but there's neither need to cling to him nor staying by his side. It's all right this way, this was the kind of life she wanted. King Shui went to the Great Hall along with three mistresses. King Shui looked at the surroundings. Nothing major had changed comparing to the time he left. Nothing much happened all these while right. King Shui guessed based on the little changes he observed. Not much, but after a discussion, we felt it's time to visit the Northern Sea. King Shui, shall we go to the Northern Sea? Yi A Jiang said after some thoughts. Do all of you want to go? Three mistresses were strong divine warriors, their knowledge had increased with time, so were their strengths. It's no longer challenging here. There would only be improvements where there are challenges. There would only be pressure when there's competition. There would only be drive when there's pressure. It's the same each and every time. We discussed among ourselves and felt the need to go. We're not alone here. Everyone has been too easy and comfortable. It's not a good thing for warriors, Sunset Palace mistress said slowly. King Shui smiled. The main reason that I'm back is to prepare and bring all of you to explore the Northern Sea and open up the breakthrough opportunities. It's a failure for Ocean Domain not to enter a large Ocean Domain. Really, the three mistresses obviously didn't see that coming. They didn't expect that King Shui returned to bring him to Northern Sea. In fact, they couldn't believe it. King Shui nodded. I think the influence of ocean domain and main continent can be merged. I could only try opening up a nick of the ocean domain together with you. King Shui actually wanted to work two tasks at the same time. Divine Moon Immortal Sect on the main continent. Sunset Seeking Palace on the ocean domain. However, he couldn't be sure which of them would progress at a faster rate. Chapter 1680 opening of the nine layers of the realm of the violet jade immortal. Never see something that great coming, we aren't afraid of nobody when you're here, King Shui. Sunset Palace Mistress said happily. Even though Miyun Chinge didn't say a word, 
but in her eyes, it's obvious that Sunset Palace mistress' words were what she wanted to say too. King Shui looked at them smiling. As a man, he felt a sense of contentment at that moment. Though we are going to Northern Sea, yet we need to have a rough understanding of it. We can't blindly head there straight away. It's different in Northern Sea compared to it's in here. King Shui smiled and said softly. Hmm, these days we've been to Northern Sea a few times. We've asked around for its news largely. Besides that, it's been idle at the North Sea Dragon King Palace. How about we take a lodge and settle down there? Yi A Jiang thought and said. King Shui didn't utter a word at once. After a while, he said, we forced North Sea Dragon King Palace to leave, it's already a fact. North Sea Dragon King Palace's strength is formidable in its region. It should be fine for us to be there. If we were to go there, do you think the men from North Sea Dragon Palace would intervene in this matter? Mayun Chinge asked unintentionally. If North Sea Dragon Palace really want to stand out for North Sea Dragon King Palace, they shouldn't have stayed silent until now. Moreover, have you noticed that this name sounds stronger than North Sea Dragon Palace? Would that be a problem? North Sea Dragon Palace, North Sea Dragon King Palace, King Shui thought North Sea Dragon Palace sounded more impressive. Yet, the name of North Sea Dragon King Palace apparently overruled the North Sea Dragon Palace. Maybe. I actually think that North Sea Dragon Palace sounds far more impressive than North Sea Dragon King Palace, Sunset Palace Mistress said while smiling. Her thoughts were similar to King Shui's. Since you've made up your mind, then, ask them to clean up the place there and we will be moving in these few days. King Shui didn't like to procrastinate. He could also check the place out within these few days. At night, King Shui was back at Ye Jiang's room. It was customary considering that they're a couple. Once entered, King Shui hugged the incomparable beauty before his eyes and kissed her soft lips. Ye Jiang reciprocated to King Shui's actions, though it's rare for her to do so. She was an otherworldly woman, barely tainted by the mortal world. Nevertheless, she's a human being, a human full of emotions, desires, and lust. Previously, she hadn't met the man she adored. Now, she was just a small woman, a woman who longed to be pampered. Shortly, both of them were exposed to each other wholeheartedly. King Shui who had suffered from, hunger, for ages, was apparently too impatient to prompt his main moves. His fiery erection entered her warm, moist and smooth spot. The overwhelming ecstasy made both of them let out moans of joy. Snowy white, slender, and fair legs wrapped around King Shui's waist like clingy ivy plants. Her gorgeous blurry eyes, her beautiful and enchanting face which was slightly blushed, and her soft panting sounds kept on exciting King Shui's nerves, driving him to thrush incessantly. The room came to rest until the breaking of dawn. At the very moment, Yi A Jiang lied in King Shui's arms languidly, reluctant to move a single bit, despite having such powerful strengths. Staring at this otherworldly beautiful face flushed with faint redness out of satisfaction, King Shui felt contented. That feeling of fulfillment was irreplaceable by gold. It was unique and unrivaled. King Shui placed her hand on his part which was about to be restless again. Yi A Jiang shivered and hugged him tightly to stop him from moving. Lacking strength, she said, you insatiable and greedy thing, I can't take it anymore. Her crystal clear and unparalleled heavenly voice was full of allure and charisma. Listening to those words which could drive any man insane, King Shui squeezed her tight emotionally. A wonderful sensation exploded and ran through their bodies. Bang! A mystical force seemingly pushed him to fuse together and unify. 
King Shui was astonished as if his ocean of consciousness blasted and a sudden nostalgia overwhelmed him. Ye Zhang felt strange and gazed at King Shui as the astounding transformations took place within her own body. Her strength improved tremendously and her foundation stabilized immensely in that split second. She felt as if her spirit energy and ocean of consciousness had advanced subtly. This could probably be due to their current intimacy and physical contact. Needless to see, King Shui had already known what happened. This was the long-awaited yet unfathomable moment. Realm of the Violet Jade Immortal upgraded. King Shui knew it coming without watching it. He could sense his spirit energy being doubled. Even his ocean of consciousness underwent remarkable changes. Nine layers of Realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. Nine grades of Realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. This was the very final grade of Realm of the Violet Jade Immortal that King Shui knew and kept him expecting. He wanted to check out the Realm of the Violet Jade Immortal instantly. Yet, apparently, it wasn't the right time now. King Shui left everything behind his mind once he bowed and saw the stunningly beautiful and lethargic look on Yi A Jiang. It was another session of passionate love making before it's time to get out of bed. Yi A Jiang didn't question a thing. Albeit being surprised by the sudden increase in her strength. Yet she didn't question as it wasn't the first time. Then, the morning practice began. King Shui took the opportunity and entered the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. King Shui was pleased once he entered. Now that the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal had expanded few times than before, there's only one possibility, the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal had upgraded. King Shui was certain of it before this, and even sure of it after seeing this himself. This is the ninth grade and the final layer of Realm of the Violet Jade Immortal that he knew. Basically, it's almost confirmed that it'd stop right where it is now. The previous pool became a small lake now. The size of this small lake was comparable to the entire eighth grade Realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. At that moment, King Shui could particularly feel the spacious land of the entire realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. The air was soulful and full of spiritual sense. The huge oak tree which used to occupy more than half of the land looked so insignificant now. Even the enormous beast appeared little here. The current picture of realm of the Violet Jade Immortal was truly in harmony. A gigantic black turtle emerged with a splash on the lake. Spirited snake turtle. As if it's greeting King Shui, it flashed and dunked into the lake bed. Some other species appeared at times. Golden medicinal turtle was no weaker than the 10,000 year clam now. King Shui headed towards the stone by the lakeside. It was a hundred meters tall now. It changed as the realm transitioned. His eyes followed the stone and looked upwards. Previously he had to look downwards. Yet, now he's looking high above, one level, two levels. Realm of the Violet Jade Immortal, ninth layer, activated. Seeing those words King Shui grinned subconsciously. Ancient strengthening technique achieved ninth heavenly. Layer, the highest level by its name. Yet, the martial world was never ending. Hence this final level should be the shackles of the predecessors. It should be extremely difficult to break through. In fact, King Shui had never thought of breaking through ninth heavenly layer. It's good enough to practice until peak of ninth heavenly layer, or even achieve the higher grades. By then, he should be able to be listed among the top warriors. Chapter 1681. Strength Improved entering the North Ocean Domain. King Shui was surprised by the upgrade of the Realm of the Violet Jade Immortal this time. The only thing he felt was the sudden collision between Yi A Jiang's consciousness and his own. Subsequently, he felt the transformations of the Realm of Violet Jade Immortal. 
King Shui read through the introduction of the ninth layer of the realm of violet jade immortal. Tenfold increase in its surface area, tenfold increase in the spiritual sense of the realm of violet jade immortal. Time in the realm of the violet jade immortal doubled from the previous layer. Seeing that, the King Shui was overjoyed. Though the time only doubled, the actual overall effect was much stronger, due to the tenfold increase in spiritual sense. King Shui continued reading. The reward was a nine yin tree which took a thousand years for it to bloom, fruit, and ripen. It was a top-rated alchemic ingredient. This name led King Shui to relate it with the Nine Revolution Spirit Resurgence Pellet. This had always been the magical medicine for revival in the legends, but King Shui figured, there was a three-day limit for revival even with the magical medicine. Once this time passed, all efforts would be in vain, regardless of taking immortal pellets or magical medicine. Besides, it was vital to have at least the intact head and heart in order to apply this life resuscitating medicine. Any other way would be pointless. According to the statement, it's a top rated ingredient for medicine distillation. It could probably be used to refine the nine revolution spirit resurgence pellet. Nevertheless, it had been ages since the ancient alchemy technique had last refined an all new medicine. It would be challenging to add a prescription relying on the realm of Violet Jade Immortal. At that instant, King Shui remembered Yuan Su. Perhaps she could be helpful later. Otherwise, it would be all up to destiny whether he could get the prescription. Reward. 10 Golden Fish, edible and able to be incorporated into medicine, effective in strengthening bones and muscles. Reward. Thousand Years Incense, Soul Capturing Incense, and Other Incense Trees, one each. Reward. Five Thousand Years of Therapeutic Duration for All Medicinal Herbs in the Realm of Violet Jade Immortal. Reward. Thirty Percent Increase in Strength and Life for All Demonic Beasts in the Realm of Violet Jade Immortal. King Shui was elated reading this. Though he was rather unprepared for the upgrade of the realm, he had been looking forward to it. It was absolutely great. This breakthrough which benefited him the most was the increase in spiritual energy, which brought a huge transformation in King Shui's strength. Both the five elements divine refining technique and the primordial flame dragon whip were dependent on spiritual energy. It was a direct and straightforward increase. After testing it out, the spiritual energy had doubled, so the current output was three times higher. It was an enormous breakthrough. King Shui's biggest pride formally came from his strongest defense and formidable strength. The recent boost in spiritual energy also improved his defense. However, the Paragon Golden Armor and the blind devotion of the Hell Nightmare Beast pushed his resistance and attack to outrageous levels. King Shui only realized his intimidating and frightening abilities at that instant. The attacking force of the Primordial Flame Dragon Whip and the Five Elements Divine Refining Technique were dreadfully increased, up to almost half the damage of the Paragon Strike now. That was relatively petrifying. King Shui could distinctly sense the changes in his body. The vibe of absolute confidence and the roaring ocean of consciousness was seemingly comprised of endless energy. He felt more certain and assured about heading to the Northern Ocean, to move the Sunset Sea King Palace there. It was rational to have greater courage when one had incomparably stronger skills. In the morning, King Shui and the three mistresses took their breakfast together. The Sunset Palace mistress and Mayun Chinge stared at King Shui at times. The breakthrough in spiritual energy brought minor changes in him. The saying of someone being, sharp, was actually based on that person having higher spiritual energy. The Sunset Palace mistress and Mayun Chinge stared at Ye Jiang, who was beside King Shui, as well. 
They noticed the glowing changes in Ye Jiang. While King Shui was brazen and insensitive, Ye Jiang felt guilty reminiscing about the romantic night she just had. Though they were inexperienced themselves, knowing that the two were a married couple and seeing Ye Jiang's current expression, both mistresses understood everything at once. The Sunset Palace mistress smiled. Both of you look exceptionally sharp today. Is it? I feel sharp all the time. King Shui smirked. All right. Let's have our meals and discuss how to move to the Northern Ocean, Ye Jiang replied hastily. She was not literally shy, now that they were like sisters, but she was a little embarrassed from being teased. I will go and have a look with Jiang beforehand, and then you'll organize the move. How's that? King Shui proposed after finishing his meal. Fine, we're already done organizing. In fact, we can move any time. Things are simple and easy. Sunset Palace Mistress sounded very assured. Miyun Chinge nodded as well. King Shui departed to the North Ocean Domain with Yi A Jiang. It was his first time entering the Northern Ocean. He bumped into the ancient Golden Shrimp General who guarded an entrance to the Northern Ocean before. However, he'd yet to find out the force behind the general. There were tens of thousands of forces in the North Ocean Domain. To be able to guard one of the Northern Ocean entrances, the force behind the general must be quite strong. It could be about the same level as the North Sea Dragon Palace and perhaps one of the peak forces in the North Ocean Domain. It was possible to enter the North Ocean Domain from the Ice Ocean Domain. The world of ocean domains did not differ much from the main continents. Furthermore, King Shui now had the Paragon Water Flight skill, let alone Yi A Jiang, who was the heir of the strong Drakinas. She was as proficient as King Shui in the water. The Sunset Sea King Palace was located at the intersection of the Ice Ocean Domain and the Northern Ocean. It was almost by one of the entrances so it was very feasible to move it to the Northern Sea. The North Sea Dragon King Palace was located near the Ice Ocean Domain. It was the most powerful force around the Ice Ocean Domain before it was unfortunately demolished by the Sunset Seeking Palace. With that, there would be no obstacles at all for the Sunset Seeking Palace to enter the North Ocean Domain. The landscape of the North Sea Dragon King Palace was well preserved. It was very spacious, with the water boundaries undamaged, but was completely deserted after the men left. King Shui and Yi A Jiang arrived within half a day. With the aid of the old turtle, it was considered a very long distance for a half-day journey. The location is great and so is its feng shui, King Shui told Yi A Jiang as he observed, smiling. Although he wasn't an expert, King Shui had somewhat studied feng shui. The theories of the nature-related landscape, the spiritual influence within the caves, the excessiveness of yin qi in certain locations might sound superstitious. Nevertheless, scientifically speaking, it was the effect of the planet's magnetic field and gravitation. It existed in his past life and also his present life. Moreover, the ample spiritual influence would deeply impact the warriors. Sometimes, formations could be related to feng shui too. Let's move here as soon as possible then. We have to move anyway, Yi A Jiang continued. Tell me, do you have other ambitions that caused you to urgently want to move to this chaotic zone? King Shui asked curiously. Chapter 1682. Yi A Jiang is pregnant. We are really not that ambitious. We just wanted to check out the Northern Ocean. It's quite meaningless to keep staying in the Ice Ocean domain. Yi A Jiang said and smiled. King Shui grinned listening to her words. Those days, Yi A Jiang wouldn't say such words. Now, she could relax, as her domestic affairs were done. Now that she was his woman, King Shui reckoned she was the most settled one. Initially, 
She was the calmest one with a mystical and otherworldly aura. Unexpectedly, she would give such a reason. King Shui was pleased after hearing that, because Ye Jiang had imperceptibly changed too. For the three years King Shui was away, Ye Jiang only returned home three times. Each time, she hurriedly dropped by for the Chinese New Year celebration. The remaining days were spent in the Sunset Sea King Palace. I met an ancient golden shrimp general at the Marshall Territories. He is the guardian of one entrances to the Northern Ocean. I wonder which force he belongs to. Jiang, can you guess? King Shui asked randomly. In the North Ocean Domain, there are only a few forces which have ancient golden shrimp generals. The North Sea Dragon Palace, North Sea Dragon Valley, North Sea Dragon Cave, and North Sea Dragon Lagoon are four of the strongest forces in the Northern Ocean. Ye Jiang smiled. They apparently had preliminary understandings about the Northern Sea now. King Shui pondered. Being able to guard the entrance of the Northern Ocean and the extremely formidable strength based off of their tone, King Shui concluded that they should be from one of the four forces that she mentioned earlier. King Shui would find it ridiculous if it was the North Sea Dragon Palace. Though he didn't hold grudges against the North Sea Dragon Palace, it was definitely tough to befriend them due to the North Sea Dragon King Palace. Given his current status and the Sunset Sea King Palace, the opponent shouldn't be able to handle them. It was not absolute superiority, but King Shui had gained more confidence now that the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal had upgraded to the ninth layer. He didn't need to worry even if the North Sea Dragon Palace came. He believed he could make a solid stand if a battle took place. King Shui wasn't worried about anybody wanting to harm the Sunset Sea King Palace this time. There was no challenger to be fearful of. The North Sea Dragon King Palace was once a powerful force, but they were destroyed by the Sunset Sea King Palace. Whoever wanted to challenge him would have to weigh his own capability. A month later, the Sunset Sea King Palace completely finished moving. King Shui and a few others moved within three days. The forces of the Sunset Sea King Palace were entirely different than before, let alone the strengths of the three mistresses. Apart from that, they had King Shui as their guardian, the previous men from the Sunset Palace and Sea King Palace, the followers from the North Sea Dragon King Palace, and other fighters. Their strengths had improved greatly in these three years. Even now, after moving to the North Sea Dragon King Palace's location, their existence was like a powerful overlord. Anyways, the Sunset Sea King Palace remained low profile and not overly flamboyant. They were never timid. King Shui noticed that life was peaceful after entering the Northern Ocean. Still, there was one thing that made King Shui overjoyed. Yi e Jiang unexpectedly became pregnant. Both of them had strong inner spirits and could sense it within a few days of conception. King Shui had been with Yi e Jiang for more than one month this time, so it was surprising to him. He didn't spend much time with Yi e Jiang previously, only intermittent intervals. This matter could never be rushed and he had planned to make long-term preparations for it too. Unexpectedly, it came so soon this time. King Shui loved having a kid with Yi e Jiang from the bottom of his heart, and he wanted one with Tan Tai Lingyan too. However, he needed more time with Tan Tai Lingyan. He felt that Tan Tai Lingyan needed a kid the most, as she would be less lonely afterward. King Shui stared at the remarkable beauty before getting lost in his thoughts. He just told her the news of her conception. She had felt it too, but she had gained King Shui's reassurance now. Why aren't you happy? King Shui smiled and asked, knowing that Yi e Jiang was actually delighted. No, I just thought it came too suddenly, Yi e Jiang smiled, gazing at King Shui. 
A smile of love and happiness was written all over her face. How was this sudden? We've been together for so long doing things. It's supposed to have happened already. King Shui giggled. It was indeed not easy to be pregnant at this level of strength. This was the warrior's burden. The stronger a warrior was, the older he aged. And basically, it was close to impossible to have children anymore. Of course, it wasn't a clear-cut thing, but the probability was extremely scarce. Nevertheless, there were many powerful warriors who had their heirs at old age. It would be always celebrated by a huge-scale banquet with guests. It was a very blissful event. King Shui's life energy was unrivaled and his strength was very formidable. Such a probability for him was thus very high. Yi e Jiang raised her hand and knocked on King Shui's head. You're still such a rogue. You've never been serious. You are my woman. How am I like a rogue? Would you like a daughter or a son? King Shui said, smiling. I like both. He or she will be our kid. A benevolent and pure smile crept onto Yi e Jiang's face. It was a pleasant thing. At that very moment, the other two mistresses came, overhearing part of their conversation. As they learned of the great news, they were elated and decided to hold a celebration banquet on that day. In spite of the name, banquet, they were the only guests. King Shui cooked while Miyun Chinge and the Sunset Palace mistress talked to Yi Jiang. Though they offered help, King Shui refused as he was able to quickly complete such a simple task by himself. Halfway through the banquet, the Sunset Palace mistress lost her focus shortly, twice. As her mind went absent, she looked at King Shui and Yi e Jiang. In fact, everyone felt her affection towards King Shui. Yet, it was all up to their destiny. No one could say anything. It was the hardest thing to bear or enjoy a beauty's favor. King Shui was overwhelmed by this feeling. It was miserable to be without a woman, but it was also burdensome to have many women, especially when he already had more than ten remarkably beautiful women like Yi e Jiang. Deep inside his heart, he didn't want to engage with anybody else. It made him feel avaricious and sorry for his women. It's a happy day today. It's great for all of us in the Sunset Sea King Palace to set up in the Northern Ocean. Cheers, King Shui smiled. Also, Jiang is pregnant. This is a huge affair. I'm really looking forward to having this kid. No matter what, he has to address me as his godmother, said Sunset Palace mistress. Elder Sis Ching Cheng, you ought to have a few more kids in the future since you like children so much, Miyun Chinge said jokingly. Chapter 1683, The Most Romantic Thing. The face of the Sunset Palace mistress instantly flushed red, down to her neck. She remained calm and silent, throwing a glance at King Shui. The three of them were used to joking around, and they were way too brilliant to guess her mind. Miyun Chinge threw that joke with nefarious intentions, as she was secretly observing King Shui's response. However, King Shui acted in a negligent way and smiled without a word. Previously, King Shui had spoken a lot to the Sunset Palace mistress and things were shady between him, Miyun Chinge and the Sunset Palace mistress. At this moment, he couldn't say anything regardless of the reason. King Shui rarely took initiative in love, but he wasn't really passive. For instance, he was the one who initiated and continued pursuing Tan Tai Lingyan, Yi e Jiang, and Qin King. The Sunset Palace mistress and Miyun Chinge were not at all inferior to his other women, but he felt sorry out of his conscience. None of his women had ever tried to control or restrict him, and he had even thought of marrying multiple wives. In his past life, King Shui was the most ordinary man, who would be pleased to find an average-looking woman that he liked. 
he could only dream of having multiple wives. As for ruling the world and owning beautiful women, he could only watch such characters on television. He wouldn't even have the chance to discuss it, because that would make him seem insane to others. King Shui reckoned he would continue his past life in the current life. In his last life, he was an ordinary man, the most ordinary man. In the beginning of this life, he couldn't practice martial arts and was fated to be useless. Following his blood awakening, he gradually stepped onto the journey of martial cultivation. He had achieved his current height through hard work and fortunate experiences. It was known that strong men never lacked women, and King Shui believed in this saying. The capable men in his past life never lacked women. It was even more so in this life, where it was a norm to have multiple wives. King Shui's women didn't become his solely because of his strength, but it's largely related to that. For example, it would have been tragic for Yi A Jiang to step into the Lion King's ridge if it hadn't been for King Shui's strength. Unknowingly, King Shui realized that there were many women around him. He even noticed that he couldn't handle it, not in a physical sense, but a spiritual one. He was the one who thought it was excessively unfair to them. King Shui never considered that he would split up his love each time he met another woman. He applied his wholehearted effort in each of his women. However, that was a contradiction, as a man had only one heart. Till now, King Shui finally figured out that it wasn't true that he couldn't devote himself fully to each of his wives. He was just worried about the relationship between his women, instead of their relationships with himself. King Shui seemingly fell deep into his thoughts. Memories were clearer now such as why Yi A Jiang chose to settle down here, but not stay by his side. It wasn't that she did not want her, or that she didn't love him. It was for a better love and relationship between them in the future. It was the same for her, Dai Chen, Yu Ruyin, and Tan Taishuan. Beauty came from its distance and love meant tolerance, to love all of him. King Shui's women gave him the greatest space. Moreover, women had to keep themselves occupied in order to maintain their personalities and charms. They ought to be rather secretive. To be mysterious signified a kind of originality, making him feel that she was the most intriguing and enchanting. The Sunset Palace mistress saw that King Shui didn't notice her and could hardly conceal her disappointment with a fake smile. It's so difficult to love someone. I'm not sure if I could have my own child this life. Jiang, you have to promise me. Yi A Jiang smiled. Elder Sis Ching Cheng's beauty is so remarkable and well known throughout the nation. There are tons of men who dream of marrying you. It's a blessing for this little one to have you as his godmother. You can't back out, Sunset Palace Mistress said with a smile, not tangled with her love issues. Mayun Chinge did not tease him further as she observed King Shui's expression. They're women with pride too. Once such a topic had been brought up, it couldn't be further pressured, or else the feelings wouldn't be the same even if the wish was fulfilled. The entire banquet soon became dull after the incident. It largely affected the mood although the three mistresses tried their best to liven up the atmosphere. After the feast, Mayun Chinge and the Sunset Palace mistress left King Shui and Yi A Jiang in the room. This was also their private space. Both of them adore you. Yi A Jiang sighed softly. King Shui smiled at Yi A Jiang. What does Jiang want to say? Why the sigh? Do you like them? Yi A Jiang stared at King Shui seriously, wanting to grasp any slight emotional stir in King Shui. King Shui shook his head lightly. Jiang, I've said this before. To like is not to love. Everyone likes beautiful things, but I can't be marrying every beautiful woman. Don't tell me you like it when I have more women. King Shui sat next to her and gently spoke, holding her waist. 
Ye Jiang smirked. What if I say that I don't mind it? King Shui shook his head. I will spend my life protecting and loving my women. Though I feel that I'm avaricious at times, I truly love all of you deep within my soul. A man has to bear the responsibility to force this thing. I can feel that elder sis Ching Cheng is head over heels for you. Don't men fall for beautiful women easily? Ye Jiang looked at King Shui with a smile. Silly girl. What's wrong with you today? You're satisfied pushing me to other women. Said King Shui with a sad and hurt face. Ye Jiang laughed out of delight. She patted on King Shui's head. I dared not dream of everything today. Yes, me too. I took you as my goddess and my master initially. Not an ounce of blasphemy existed. I could only feel ashamed and inferior before you. I could not conquer this mindset up till now. Ye Jiang blushed a little. Regardless of their actual relationship, she was his master by name previously. So it was rather awkward for the current change in relationship. Yet, it was warm and comforting now. It was the perfect ending for her. She felt great. I'm a woman. You're a woman? Ye Jiang murmured shyly. She needed to boost her man's confidence. Time flew by and another month passed. King Shui spent the month idly and peacefully. He and Ye Jiang were like the most ordinary couple. People envied them for being in love and so inseparable. King Shui thought these days were busy, yet meaningful. He thought of a song from his past life, the most romantic thing. King Shui looked at the woman by his side, whose beauty was remarkable and unique across their generation. He couldn't help but whisper, the most romantic thing that I could think of, is to grow old slowly, together with you. Chapter 1684. Diamond Immortal Turtle, Jin Gizi. Old Mo of the Royal Blood, from the Black Scales Merman race. Ye Jiang's body trembled slightly when she heard King Shui speaking softly beside her. She turned and smiled at him, staring at this good-natured young man. At this moment, he was as stable as a mountain, and would even occasionally say things that made her blush so much that she would feel ashamed. However, this was the first time that he had revealed the true feelings in his heart. You won't be able to do it. You are destined to be unable to stop. Ye Jiang smiled. Woman, can you just agree with me for once? King Shui helplessly spoke. He didn't just have a single woman. It was impossible for him to wait for a woman until he grew old. You are thinking too much. Since we are doing this, I have no more regrets. If we can rewind time, we would have still made this choice. Ye Jiang sincerely replied as she stared at King Shui. King Shui felt very happy in his heart. Living in this world, what else could he wish for? How was he qualified to obtain her heart? Sometimes, he truly felt that he was just extremely lucky. King Shui could be considered very outstanding, but his women were all cream of the crop as well. They wouldn't lack talented men by their side, so the fact that King Shui managed to woo them successfully was a matter of destiny. King Shui idled about for a month. Today, the mistress of the Sunset Palace and Miyun Chinge came by. They directly spoke. There's news saying that the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace is going to take the initiative, and help the North Sea Dragon King Palace. King Shui started and stared at the two women. What origins does the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace have? What relationship does it have with the North Sea Dragon King Palace? Marriage Connections there are two women in the North Sea Dragon King Palace who are from the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace. One of them is the wife of the first palace master, and the other one is a concubine of the third palace master. Miyun Chinge spoke in a light tone. King Shui was more and more curious when he heard this. Back then, he didn't expect the two palaces would still have such a relation. It had been peaceful for so long. 
and after the Sunset Sea King Palace had only moved here for a month, the other party wanted to seize the initiative for the North Sea Dragon King Palace. How's the strength level of the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace? King Shui thought about it. Since he already knew that the Sunset Sea King Palace was the one that destroyed the North Sea Dragon King Palace, it was best for him to have an estimate of his opponent's strength. Since the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace dared to take the initiative, this meant that their strength surely wasn't bad. The authority of the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace isn't in this region. Since they dared to take the initiative for the North Sea Dragon King Palace, it's clear that they are much stronger in comparison. The palace mistress of the Sunset Sea King Palace stared at King Shui as she spoke. Her words were precisely King Shui's thoughts. This logic was very simple and King Shui discovered that many of his thoughts were actually similar to hers. Let us wait for them to come then. King Shui wasn't some scaredy cat. He wasn't very worried about this matter, but he wouldn't let his guard down. The Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace should be one of the strongest powers in this region within the North Sea. Before this, it had marriage connections with the North Sea Dragon King Palace and wasn't considered a threat. But when we took down the North Sea Dragon King Palace, our strength should have reached a level high enough to be threatening to them. Hence, if we continue to grow, we might have to contend against them. The palace mistress and Mayun Chinge sat down in front of King Shui. Is the palace master of the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace a dragon wolf of the aquatic race? King Shui asked. King Shui still knew some info about dragon wolves. This was a bloodline that stemmed from the primordial era and was much stronger compared to the ordinary dragon races. In this world, the dragon race was the strongest, but true dragons were a minority. The Drakina race which Mayun Chinge was from was also considered part of the true dragon race. Yes you are right, it's a dragon wolf, but the dragon wolf shouldn't be that much stronger than the North Sea Dragon King Palace Master. After all, the strength in a marriage alliance is such that the disparity wouldn't be too far apart. The Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace challenging the Sunset Sea King Palace isn't completely because they wanted to get back at us for the North Sea Dragon King Palace. If not, they wouldn't have delayed it until now. It should have something to do with the fact that the Sunset Sea King Palace moved here. Although the two women from the North Sea Dragon King Palace were part of the Eastern Peak, they couldn't control the operations of the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace at all. It was likely that the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace must have felt threatened by the strength of the Sunset Sea King Palace. The Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace should have some understanding of our strength. It has been quite a long time and they are only seeking justice for the North Sea Dragon King Palace now. There must be some reason for their action. We just have no idea what the exact reason is. The females fell silent, but King Shui wasn't nervous at all. Ye Jiang was now over a month pregnant. Although it wouldn't affect her in combat, King Shui, the palace mistress and Mayun Chinge decided that it would be for the best for her not to participate in this. King Shui was actually pretty relaxed. If it was before, he would surely be nervous and worried but after the upgrade of the Violet Jade Immortal Realm, his combat prowess had leapt up to another level. He felt that there would be no problem if he handled this matter. Three days later, a large challenge letter was sent to the Sunset Sea King Palace. There were many people in this world who chose to use such a method to announce a challenge. By doing this, things were out in the open and straightforward. If one party was defeated, they wouldn't be completely annihilated and their clan members would also be spared. This was the benefit of issuing a challenge letter. Naturally, this wasn't absolute. There were some warriors in this world who didn't have any ethics, 
and there might also be other factors influencing the overall situation. Sending a challenge letter usually indicated two possibilities. One was that the initial party was completely confident in victory. Not only did he feel he could win, he wanted to make all the prestige and reputation of his opponent drop to rock bottom. The other possibility was that he was not confident in himself at all, and by sending a challenge letter out of politeness, he would be able to avoid complete annihilation of his clan if he did lose. King Shui glanced at the contents of the letter. It was very simple. It simply stated that it was seeking justice for the North Sea Dragon King Palace and wanted a life and death battle with the Sunset Sea King Palace. Victory would be decided in a single round. Death and injuries would not be blamed upon anyone else. There were no other conditions, as it was a life and death battle. From this point, it meant that one could not live if the other survived. King Shui naturally agreed to this life and death battle. The timing was set for three days later, and the number of people participating for either side couldn't exceed eight. This was a group battle. King Shui laughed. Eight people. On his side, Yi e Jiang was indisposed, and he and the two other women were only three. However, he still had Long Zhu Er, the Dark Phoenix, and the Old Turtle. The other demonic beasts that had undergone form transformation couldn't be counted upon. After all, they could only unleash their strongest might in beast form. Right now, King Shui's side had a total of six participating. There were still other divine level experts in the Sunset Sea King Palace. Although they couldn't be compared to the three women, there were still two more who were only slightly inferior. These two could join in, making their party a total of eight. The two of them were also aquatic races. Jin Gizi from the Diamond Immortal Turtle race and a royal black scales merman named Old Mo. The two of them had the appearance of decrepit old men. Right now, they were already in the Sunset Sea King Palace. Given their level of strength, they should be strong enough to participate in the life and death battle. Chapter 1685. Eve Before Battle. Initially, King Shui didn't intend on allowing Old Jin, Jin Gizi, and Old Mo to participate in the combat. It was just that after a discussion with the females, they realized this wasn't good. If they did so, it would mean that they looked down on the two elders, not treating him truly as one of their own. If that was the case, how could the other members truly feel that the Sunset Palace was their family? King Shui thought about it and sighed with emotion. He had experienced many battles in his life, and right now, he realized that most of the time, he was always fighting alone. Even his women rarely fought together with him. Now, although the disparity between their strengths was larger apart, it was still possible for them all to fight together. King Shui realized that he wanted to keep on fighting together with his companions in the future. Only by fighting together would the feeling of camaraderie come about. Not only did he plan to fight together with his women in the future, he wanted to fight together with his friends as well. That's true. In that case, okay then, we will allow old Jin and old Mo to participate as well. King Shui smiled. When old Jin and old Mo learned of the news, they were in fact extremely happy. King Shui didn't even have time to look for them before they showed up looking for him. King Shui was someone who respected the old. In the Sunset Palace, old Jin and old Mo were considered the leaders of their races and both had extremely high statuses. Even King Shui and the three palace mistresses had to respect them. Naturally, they were both also people deserving of respect. Respecting the old and cherishing the young was a kind of virtue, and although decisions on major matters were still made by the palace mistresses, the elders could add their two cents as well. Although things were said this way, only those at the top had absolute authority in powerful sects or aristocrat clans. 
Strength was everything. The attitude of the one with strength determined everything. Sirs, why are you both here? When King Shui saw the two old men, he stood up warm-heartedly to welcome them. Mr. King, we heard that the leaders would allow us to participate in this war against the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace. We wonder if this is true. The old man who spoke had a sturdy build. Although his hair had gone white, his aura was incomparably vast and intense. When he walked, the sound of his steps created a slight sonic boom, like a heavy pressure slamming into the earth. This old man was none other than Jin Gizi, a supreme expert of the Diamond Immortal Turtle Race. The other old man had an extremely dark skin tone and was very burly. His eyes were filled with the vicissitudes of time and glinted with determination. He smiled and stared at King Shui with anticipation. I just wanted to go look for you guys. I wonder if you two old sirs are willing to fight. King Shui invited him to sit as he spoke. There's nothing we want more. It has been so long since we last fought. No matter what, we have to participate this time. Old Mo hurriedly said, martial cultivators lived with their lives on the line every day. Although they couldn't say they were born to do battle, it was an undeniable fact that combat was a very frequent part of their lives, and that they might die at any time. Just like a saying in his past life, humans in the pugilist world are unable to control their fate. Warriors would battle constantly and didn't even have leeway for a single mistake. Nobody had the confidence to say they would win their next battle for sure and continue to live on. That's excellent. That's our intent as well. I will have to trouble you two sirs then. Mister, you are too polite. We are a part of the Sunset Palace. It's naturally our mission to defend this place. Not too long later, the two old men departed. King Shui could also tell that this was necessary. Although sometimes not letting them join the battle was a way of protecting them, there were many cultivators who weren't willing to hide somewhere and wait for their deaths. Time passed by very quickly. In just a short while, three days had passed. King Shui and the Sunset Palace mistress, Miyun Chingge, Old Jin and Old Mo brought along some people and appeared in a location not that far away from the Sunset Palace. There were many sunken mountains around the area, just like a ravine. However, this ravine was too vast. Yi A Jiang also came. However, King Shui didn't allow her to participate in the battle. King Shui was confident, which was why he didn't stop Yi A Jiang from coming. There was still quite many experts who came from the Sunset Sea King Palace. After all, the distance was not far and many experts from the other powers came as well. The timing in which they arrived wasn't too early. The people from the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace were already here. He felt that in terms of understanding each other's power, their opponent had more of an advantage. However, this was only on the surface. In reality, because King Shui's Violet Jade Immortal Realm had reached the peak ninth level, his strength once again explosively increased. This was something nobody knew about. King Shui stared at the people of the Dragon Wolf Palace. The one in the lead was a middle-aged man who resembled a human. He had a muscular figure and his most outstanding features were both his eyes and his forehead. The eyes of this middle-aged man were bright and sharp, containing a hint of imposingness. Not only him, the others behind him all had the same special characteristic. This should be the unique characteristic of dragon wolves. King Shui, that man in the lead is none other than the third palace master of the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace. He is a great genius of the palace, with overwhelming talent and who is also wise and cautious. He is very powerful. His attacks are sharp and sinister. You must take special note of him during combat, the Sunset Palace mistress reminded. 
King Shui nodded his head. It seemed like the Sunset Palace mistress had also received some news. Behind him, the two old men are the protectors of the Dragon Wolf Palace. The main point is that the two of them are brothers and can cooperate seamlessly, causing their power to increase exponentially. The palace mistress continued. King Shui glanced at the two old men as he listened. Those two looked like classic dragon wolves but their faces were all wrinkled due to their age. Their eyes seemed somewhat listless and there was a lack of spirit in them as well. However, an extremely baleful aura would gush forth from their bodies occasionally. It seems that there are still plenty of top-tier experts in the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace. King Shui smiled. They are much stronger compared to the North Sea Dragon King Palace. Actually, without you, we wouldn't have any confidence of victory if we fought against the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace, the palace mistress smiled. You girls are so confident in me. King Shui stared at her. Him, with you here. I'm not afraid no matter who I have to fight against. Mayun Chinge then added. King Shui awkwardly rubbed his nose. He saw Mayun Chinge smiling at him while winking mischievously. This was just an ordinary action, but when a woman as beautiful as Mayun Chinge did it, there was a fatal attractive power. Her snow-like skin was soft and supple. Right now, she even seemed to emit a jade-like halo that was like the blooming of a resplendent flower. Mayun Chinge stared at King Shui who had fallen into a daze as he watched her. She suddenly blushed and shot out her hand silently to pinch him. After all, there were people around them, and there were many who were monitoring his movements. Only now did King Shui return to his senses. Mayun Chinge retracted her hand, but the blush was still on her face. King Shui could only smile awkwardly before shifting his attention to the experts from the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace. Chapter 1686, Battle, 5 vs. 5. Who among you makes decisions? I have something I wish to say. The man in the lead spoke. His voice was extremely low but clear. The Sunset Palace mistress pushed King Shui lightly from behind, indicating that he should take a step forward. She wanted King Shui to step out on his own, and this also told the opponents that King Shui could make decisions. King Shui helplessly smiled at their opponents, there's even a challenge letter issued already. I wonder if there's anything else you need to say. I hope that the battle this time around won't implicate the innocent no matter who wins. I wonder what you think about this. That man in the lead stared at King Shui as he spoke. Upon hearing these words, King Shui knew that their opponents didn't have complete confidence in their victory. To put it better, this man was more cautious. King Shui didn't let down his guard, and after contemplating for a moment, he nodded, that's only natural. In fact, it was common for the winners to be king, while the losers were vilified. No matter the agreement before the battle, once a party was defeated, even if the victorious side didn't annihilate their opponents completely, they would also enforce some severe conditions. In front of everyone as witnesses, making an open agreement might prove to be of some use. Because both the strengths of the Sunset Sea King Palace and Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace were the strongest here, no one else would dare to say anything. Okay, let us begin then. After speaking, the man instantly rushed up into the air. At the same time, the experts around him also lunged out. What surprised King Shui was that the opposing leader only mobilized five experts. King Shui also sent out a total of five people. In this case, the number of experts were equal. King Shui was as calm as water, matching the strategy of his opponent. This was a kind of psychological battle. Both parties stood in the air staring at each other. The battle would erupt at any instant. 
King Shui activated the Phoenix Battle Intent, Battle God Halo, Heavenly Talisman and his other powers. It was only obvious when he used the Heavenly Talisman. When he activated the other augmentation effects, they weren't too obvious. King Shui took out his Golden Battle Halberd. He didn't use the Diamond Staff as he could use its effect just by placing the staff in the Violet Jade Immortal Realm. At this moment, his opponent also took out his weapon. Time flowed by. King Shui stared at the five opponents. They were using something that resembled a cross between sharp claws and swords, with the sharp point curled up in a hook. Woo-woo! Suddenly, a low-sounding roar resounded, akin to a wolf and also a tiger. Dragon Wolf Cry! King Shui knitted his brows. This was how the Dragon Wolf race raised their strength and morale. Although it wasn't that heaven-defying, it was still a special technique. King Shui shook his head slightly before his silhouette flashed, as he punched out with his right hand. Boom! Right now, any casual strike by King Shui had the power to split apart mountains and rivers. The third palace master didn't dare to casually block his attack. With a wave of his hand, the third palace master manifested a wall made of stone to defend against it. Dragon wolves were proficient in the control of both the water and earth elements. Even with their powerful physiques, in addition to the water at the bottom of the sea, he still had no way to prevent his origin key from exploding due to the impact. The battle erupted. Mayun Chinge, the Sunset Palace mistress, Old Jin and Old Mo all rushed out at the same instant. The one who struck first possessed the advantage and at the same time, their opponents also rushed over. However, their opponents were moving forward in extremely weird-looking positions. Dragon Wolf Position King Shui already saw through it. The way these positions worked was something akin to a formation. This probably was a kind of inheritance power. King Shui's eyes flickered with a hint of resolution as he smashed the golden battle halberd in his hand towards the third palace master. Paragon Strike. King Shui was gambling. He wanted to see if he could kill his opponent. This was his ultimate killing technique and this was the first time it was unleashed so early in a battle. Bang! At the instant they exchanged blows, King Shui could see that his opponent's face was filled with panic, but that panic still had not reached the level of true terror. At the moment of contact, King Shui felt that a vast majority of power had dissipated away. Flower substituting wood. The third palace master used his own killing technique. Every day, he could only use a single instance of this skill, flower substituting wood. He neutralized that ultimate killing strike from King Shui, so it was naturally an immensely powerful battle technique. This ending was somewhat within King Shui's expectations, but it also wasn't. He did expect that this paragon strike might not be effective, but he didn't expect that the power of his strike would be neutralized to such a large extent. Nine Stances of the Ancient Divine Battle Technique the golden battle halberd in King Shui's hand slanted at an angle and smashed once again towards the third palace master. At this moment, his comrades also found their respective opponents. King Shui fought while he surveyed the commotion in the surroundings. The third palace master's strength was the greatest among those who came today. However, when the two other old men fought together, their overall strength even exceeded the third palace master. Right now, the two old men were fighting against Mayun Chinge and the Sunset Palace Mistress. The mutual understanding of the two women wasn't simple either. Although it wouldn't be easy for them to gain victory, they also wouldn't be easily defeated. Old Jin and Old Mo fought the other two remaining opponents. Their opponents didn't look very conspicuous but their defenses were as stable as a mountain. 
King Shui discovered that the two opponents were struck by Old Jin and Old Mo's attacks several times, but there was no effect at all. Simultaneously, although their attacks hit Old Jin several times, they couldn't injure him either. Old Jin was from the Diamond Immortal Turtle race, so he had an innately insanely high defense. Although Old Mo's defense wasn't as crazily high as Old Jin's, as a black-scaled merman, his physique was among the strongest of the aquatic race. Hence, when these four fought together, it wouldn't be so easy to determine who would be the victors. The other battles would require quite some time before any party could gain victory. This should be the case if no unexpected things happened. Hence, the crucial point would be the battle between King Shui and the Third Palace Master. Whoever was victorious in this fight would be able to join the other battles, winning them all one by one. King Shui's golden battle halberd stabbed out like a golden dragon, aiming for his opponent. At the same time, a golden beam of light suddenly shot out with extreme speed. Golden sword. Dragon wolf shield. Bang! A thunderous ear-splitting sound echoed out. King Shui discovered that this third palace master of the Dragon Wolf Palace wasn't simple at all. Although King Shui didn't use Emperor's Key or the art of pursuing, he was still really surprised that this opponent could neutralize so many of his attacks. Bloodthirsty Demonic Vines The Dragon Wolf race were all proficient in dual elements of earth and water. Earth counters water, and these two contradictory elements actually appeared in a single species. Despite the contradictory attributes, the dragon wolf race could easily fuse them. As King Shui fought, he gradually discovered that the physique of the dragon wolf race was of the earth attribute. Wood counters earth. King Shui's demonic vines were absolutely terrifying. In addition to the countering effect, the third palace master's legs went soft the moment he saw the vines and he hurriedly evaded as he cut a sorry figure. Chapter 1687. Dragon Wolf Imprint, Breaking Cauldrons Sinking Boats. Bang! A thick, blood-colored vine shot forwards, emitting its powerful devouring key. Currently, the five elements divine refining technique was King Shui's strongest attack after the Paragon Strike. Also, the energy consumption was very little because he had just received a large boost to his spiritual energy. This made the sensation he had before, of his attacks not being sufficient enough, completely disappear. A demonic vine plus the golden armor from earlier made King Shui's confidence soar. Roaming Dragon Steps. Paragon Water Flight. King Shui was like a fish in water as he rushed towards the Third Palace Master. Although he wasn't able to fully gauge the strength of his opponent, this short battle gave King Shui a rough estimation. He now had confidence that he would be able to defeat this opponent. Just given his terrifying body strength, King Shui's attacks were like a windstorm blasting towards his opponent. The five elements divine refining technique plus the nine stances of the ancient divinity battle technique both exploded forth with his all-out power. Right now, the third palace master was suffering unspeakably. Now, even if he could speak, he wouldn't choose to do so, because he was already almost unable to cope with King Shui's attacks. He never would have expected the strength of this young man to be so crazy. In fact, he was actually very unlucky. He didn't think King Shui's strength would increase this fast. There was no need to doubt the benefits the ninth level of the Violet Jade Immortal Realm had given King Shui. The increase in spiritual strength had also caused his attack power to increase several times and boosted his defense tremendously. It was very rare for King Shui to feel so comfortable fighting a tough opponent. He had enough endurance and wasn't worried about the energy consumption. Hence, he went all out without holding anything back. He wasn't worried about not having enough strength to continue fighting later. 
Right now, the third palace master could only defend. Right from the start, the two of them had exchanged over a thousand moves. When experts fought, over ten moves could be done in an instant. In fact, the third palace master was waiting for King Shui's strength to wane before he counterattacked. Naturally, he wouldn't miss some of the opportunities that he saw. Being on the defense required lesser energy compared to being on the attack. However, being completely defensive was dangerous, as one would be in a passive state. Also, one would never be able to win unless one attacked. Nobody knew if his defense would be broken by the next attack or not. King Shui's moves were actually all very simple. However, he was fast, insanely fast. What made King Shui happy was that his strength and spiritual energy seemed to have fused into one. The nine stances and five elements divine refining technique also seemed to be merging right now. This kind of fusion was a fusion of strength and spiritual energy. King Shui discovered that the power of the nine stances increased exponentially compared to the past. If not, he wouldn't be able to suppress this third palace master. On the martial path, the fusion of spiritual energy and strength was an important sign. At the pinnacle of power, the path which was taken to get there didn't matter. Everything flowed back to the same source. The fusion of spiritual energy and strength was a sign of a divine level cultivator. True divinities could overturn the sky and earth with a wave of their hands, toppling mountains and oceans. The power they used wasn't pure strength nor was it pure spiritual energy. In fact, it was a complete fusion of both that granted them their abilities. King Shui's transformation was exceedingly clear to the third palace master. Right now, he was truly frightened. This young man was simply too much of a genius. One must know that only true divinities had achieved such a fusion. In all the years he lived and all the years he had yet to live, he didn't have the confidence to achieve such a feat. Right now, the power of the golden battle halberd also continued to increase unceasingly. Nine stances of the ancient divine battle technique. Right now, his nine stances could be said to have reached perfection. King Shui also didn't know how much he had practiced and used this. He only remembered three words. Practice makes perfect. When one gets increasingly familiar with something, he would be able to turn the ordinary into something extraordinary. It was just like how King Shui had practiced the basic sword techniques in the past, to the extent they could unleash the same level of power as legendary techniques. The nine stances of the ancient divine battle technique was originally a divine technique. When one reached the level of perfection, the power unleashed would naturally be even more terrifying. Now, the change in spiritual energy also caused his body strength to increase unceasingly. The third palace master fought valiantly. He discovered that his opponent was gaining ground the more they fought. As though the word, fatigue, wasn't in King Shui's dictionary. In addition, King Shui seemed to grow stronger and stronger while he felt increasingly helpless. He knew that such a situation occurred because of one state of heart. Because King Shui grew more powerful, the third palace master's battle intent actually diminished. If one's battle intent waned to zero, they would be completely finished. But when encountering an unexpected situation that was turning out to be disastrous, one couldn't help but to lose heart. One flow, thousand miles. The helplessness in his heart would soon grow into a towering tree of despair once it germinated. The third palace master knew he couldn't afford to have this to happen. If he failed to control the situation, he might lose his life. He gathered himself and steadied his mind. No matter what, he had to give his all for the sake of survival. Everything happened within an instant. Dragon Wolf imprint. A fearsome demonic beast suddenly appeared, 
manifested by the third palace master. This demonic beast had the head of a dragon and the body of a wolf. The tyrannical might it exuded was as cold as the aura of a sharp sword, causing one's hair to stand on end. Fast, powerful, sharp. King Shui's spiritual sense was exceedingly sharp. A clear feeling appeared in his mind. This kind of feeling felt very mystical, but he couldn't be completely sure. Indeed, when he parried this blow, he could feel this attack by the third palace master was much stronger and faster compared to earlier. In addition, there was a sinister and cold aura within his attack. The weapon of the third palace master gleamed with a black luster and stabbed out towards King Shui in a spiraling manner. Dragon Piercing Spin Nine Continents Mountain King Shui felt extremely uncomfortable under the pressure of that attack, and he directly summoned out the Nine Continents Mountain for defense. Slashing Heaven Strike King Shui's golden battle halberd shone with a resplendent golden luster. This was the combination of the nine stances of the ancient divine battle technique and the golden sword. The Nine Continents Mountain had already been knocked away and King Shui could only go all out in a head-on clash. King Shui gathered his spirit. He didn't dare be careless. Every battle was a valuable experience, and this was especially so when fighting against such a strong opponent. Bang! Pa! What King Shui didn't expect was that this strike actually broke the dragon's thorn of his opponent. King Shui was stunned and so was the third palace master. One must know that the dragon thorn wasn't any ordinary weapon. It wouldn't shatter so easily. King Shui contemplated a while and guessed that it should have something to do with strength. Also, it must have something to do with the level of the nine stances of the ancient divine battle technique. Earlier, King Shui felt that he had made a breakthrough in the nine stances. At the moment King Shui started, the third palace master had already recovered from his surprise. A crazed look appeared in his eyes and the remaining half of the dragon's thorn stabbed towards King Shui's throat. Breaking cauldrons sinking boats. When King Shui recovered from his moment of shock, he only saw the thorn getting closer and closer to his throat. Before this, he had already used the Paragon Golden Armor. Even for someone like him, King Shui couldn't help but tense up at this dire moment. Chapter 1688 Death of the Third Palace Master, King Shui and the Setting Sun Palace Mistress are injured. At this moment, King Shui didn't dare to be careless. Both of his eyes stared at the broken dragon thorn that was piercing over. This broken thorn emitted a special energy that felt like a spatial lock. King Shui wanted to evade, but he couldn't do so. It wasn't because his opponent's speed was fast. It was simply a feeling that he couldn't evade the strike, no matter how much he wanted to. King Shui's spiritual sense was very clear. He wouldn't joke around with his life. Right now, he only had a single method left. Sacrifice the pawn to protect the king. Minute subtlety. It has been a very long time since King Shui had used minute subtlety. At the very instant before the dragon thorn pierced into his throat, a marvelous attractive force seemed to guide the thorn downwards in a slanted path. Chi. Despite King Shui's fearsome defense, he couldn't block the penetrative might of that strike. The broken dragon thorn pierced right into his shoulder. The wound was very deep, but the dragon thorn didn't manage to penetrate it cleanly. King Shui instantly felt an extremely cold coursing through his entire body. It wasn't over yet. At this instant, King Shui suddenly felt an intense chill assailing his senses. This was the ultimate water elemental technique of the third palace master frozen solid. At this instant, despite having a nine yang body, King Shui also felt his heart turn cold from fear. In spite of the chill, King Shui was still able to move. 
If it isn't for his special physique, he would likely have already turned into a block of ice. Although he still could move, his movements became much slower. Right now, he was in great danger and didn't have much time to think. A golden beam of light flashed from the area near his heart. The third palace master was still very happy when he saw that the dragon thorn managed to pierce into King Shui's shoulder. He knew that not many people could withstand the freezing energy within. Just as he was preparing to use his origin energy to augment the dragon thorn to shatter King Shui, he suddenly felt a pain in his brain. This pain acted up very fast. But the third palace master didn't believe that there was no cause for this pain. He hurriedly sent his origin key, wanting to use it to invade King Shui's body. But at this very moment, the marrow nibbling golden dragon silkworm King Shui placed in the third palace master's body already started to nibble on his brain tissue. Such pain was something unbearable, no matter how strong one was in cultivation. Very swiftly, the third palace master's consciousness started to grow blurry. However, his origin key still invaded King Shui's body, causing more cracks to appear around King Shui's wound. The meridians around it were broken, but luckily the wound wasn't near his heart. If the wound was there, things would be extremely troublesome. Broken meridians were something incurable in the Nine Continents. Many cultivators were crippled because their meridians were broken. To cripple a cultivator, damage to the meridians must be precisely administered. Damage to the meridians near the cultivator's shoulder wouldn't be able to disable the cultivator at all. There were plenty of experts who had lost the use of a shoulder, but for those cases, it could still be considered damage to their meridians. Their combat prowess would be affected. Only if those important meridians near the heart, the central palace, danshan, or brain were damaged would the cultivator be crippled. The third palace master had died. He died an extremely swift death. King Shui had immense confidence in the abilities of the marrow nibbling golden dragon silkworm. He glanced at the gory wound on his shoulder, yet a happy smile could be seen on his face. He was on the border of life and death in this battle. If he didn't have the marrow nibbling golden dragon silkworm, he would have no idea how to evade this calamity. At this moment, King Shui was completely drenched in his perspiration, yet he couldn't feel the pain of his shoulder. His body was still very strong. The Nine Yang physique was able to ward off the cold in his body. He was slowly recovering. King Shui gritted his teeth and wrenched the broken thorn out of his body as he coughed out blood. The intense pain caused his body to tremble violently as he let out a groan of misery. He took out some golden needles to seal his meridians, and used a drop of water from the spring of life to wash the wound first before using golden ointment powder on it. When all that was done, he swiftly took out some bandages and wrapped them around the injured area. All this happened within the span of a single breath. King Shui didn't dare delay for too long. The battle had yet to end, but the death of the third palace master caused chaos to erupt from the experts under him. The death of a supreme expert could cause the situation to change abruptly. The Sunset Palace mistress took this chance and launched a sure kill technique, breaking off the arm of one of the old men. Her opponent was distracted for a moment because of the death of the third palace master. With immense spirit, one could conquer mountains and rivers. This location was considered their territory, while the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace had to travel so far. It was inevitable their aura and morale would be slightly weakened. King Shui initially thought that he still needed to act. He didn't expect the death of the third palace master would instantly cause the battle situation to change. These people were all supreme experts and should have perfected their states of heart. However, humans were all like this. 
People who wouldn't flinch in the face of death were very rare, very very rare. The remaining old man suddenly executed a technique that caused his figure to grow faint. The dragon thorn in his hand transformed into an oily dark color as he stabbed towards the Sunset Palace mistress. Brand of life, soul chasing strike. Mayun Qingzhi's countenance changed. At this moment, King Shui rapidly rushed over, but because of the distance, he couldn't be there in time. Mayun Qingge was closer and she was prepared for something like this to happen earlier. She sent out a burst of energy that shifted the Sunset Palace Mistress. This made it so that the Palace Mistress was able to evade the strike to the heart, but her stomach was pierced through. Only then did King Shui arrive. The golden battle halberd smashed down with no mercy, onto the body of that old man. King Shui could fight evenly against the third palace master, but it was clear that these remaining enemies were not on his level. The old man naturally collapsed under the might of that strike and died. The remaining old man only had a single arm left. Right now, both parties were already at a state where one wouldn't give up until the others died. He didn't beg for mercy because he knew it was useless. If he did so, this wouldn't be a life and death battle. King Shui caught hold of the palace mistress. The wound to her stomach was very deep and he didn't dare to be careless. He hurriedly took out his golden needles to seal the meridians and vessels around the wound to stop the flow of blood. Staring at that beautiful face of the palace mistress, her countenance was a pale, sickly white. Mayun Chinge was completely enraged. She went all out against the remaining old man, and because of her anger, her attacking power rose sharply. Her anger caused her blood to be ignited, granting her even more strength. This was especially true for those with unique bloodlines. The injuries the Sunset Palace mistress had suffered were very serious. Right now, King Shui was taking care of her. King Shui was proficient in the medical arts and held her in his arms. The palace mistress was also holding on to him very tightly, as though she was afraid that King Shui would leave her. Am I going to die soon? The palace mistress felt her life force vanishing after being struck by that unique weapon. The place of her injury was near her danshan, and it was undoubtedly an extremely serious one. If nothing unexpected happened, she would most probably become a cripple in the future. With me here, nothing will go wrong. Believe in me. King Shui spoke assuredly. I believe you. I have always trusted you. I'm fine. Just put me down and assist them. I don't want any of my subordinates to be injured. The palace mistress propped herself up and stood there unyieldingly, supported by the strength of her spirit. Chapter 1689. Great Palace Master, Nine Yin's Sacred Hands. Given her current injuries, she couldn't even stand by herself. King Shui naturally wouldn't place her down. He just carried her without regard to her protests. Listen to me. Nothing will happen to them. King Shui could see that their opponents basically had no more chance of claiming victory. But now, because of the Sunset Palace mistress's injuries, King Shui directly used Emperor's Key. This could increase the chance of their side obtaining a victory. King Shui's rough voice caused the heart of the palace mistress to be filled with a current of warmth. Right now, she was injured, but she felt that this was her most blessed moment. In fact, she even wanted this moment to continue forever. She knew that she was at the point of no return, falling in love with a man that was not in love with her. She didn't complain. She was very strong and had already stated her feelings. However, she was an extremely proud woman with dignity. She wouldn't cling on to someone simply because there was no meaning to doing that. But she had always been filled with bitterness, an indescribable bitterness in her heart. Now, when she heard King Shui's coaxing words, 
Her heart felt extremely warm as King Shui was the man she loved. She gently lied in his embrace with no rebuttal as her heart grew more firm. At this moment, King Shui didn't have any other thoughts in his mind. He was embracing a jade-like beauty, but it was too difficult to achieve the state where there were no distractions in his heart. It wasn't that King Shui didn't like her. Who wouldn't like a beautiful woman? It was just that King Shui had other reasons of his own. The battle continued. King Shui carried her and walked away. Right now, he didn't use his hands. He only needed to use the Emperor's key, art of pursuing, nine palace laws and spirit energy to control the battlefield easily. The sudden huge change caused the battle to be swiftly concluded. Actually, it was usually impossible for powerful experts to fight for a full day. When experts fought against each other, victory and defeat could be determined in the span of a single breath. This was why the battlefield was subjected to instantaneous changes. Naturally, there were also exceptions. When two evenly matched opponents were fighting and all other factors remained neutral, the battle might take a very long time. But everyone would surely have different ultimate arts and sure kill techniques, so there would always be changes to the battlefield depending on the decisions of the ones fighting. Mayun Chinge wasn't injured, and neither was old Mo nor old Jin. King Shui discovered that although his injuries now couldn't heal instantaneously, he only needed a single night of rest, as his body had automatically activated its recovery mode. The Violet Jade Immortal Realm had already reached the ninth level, and the time dilation effect was more than twice that of the previous level. The fact that he could only enter there for six hours per day still hadn't changed, but the amount of time he could spend within had increased tremendously. Under such conditions, in addition to King Shui's powerful recovery rate, he would naturally be able to heal from most injuries in the span of a single night. At this moment, Yi A Jiang stood by his side, staring concernedly at the palace mistress as she spoke. King Shui, will elder sister Ching Cheng be okay? Don't worry, nothing bad will happen. King Shui was very confident of this. Right now, the palace mistress was already in a half-dazed state. Nobody would imagine that King Shui was currently hugging a beauty. After all, the face of this woman was pale white, and her entire body was covered in blood. King Shui, can you take elder sister Ching Cheng back to treat her injuries first? Leave the things here to us. Miyun Chinge returned and urged King Shui. The battle here could already be considered concluded. There was basically no more danger. King Shui thought for a while as he nodded. Right now, he could only do what he could to help the Sunset Palace mistress's injuries. Hence, King Shui, Yi A Jiang and the palace mistress departed first. The injury the palace mistress sustained was on her stomach. It was an extremely serious wound. If King Shui wasn't present, the palace mistress would definitely have become a cripple today. To a martial cultivator, this was simply too cruel especially for people at the divine level. King Shui's state of heart was a little out of sorts. He knew that this woman was in love with him and if he had feelings for her, she most probably wouldn't reject them. After the initial operation was done, King Shui entered into his violet jade immortal realm and took out some herbs, preparing to concoct medicine as he walked out of the room. Right now, the palace mistress had fallen asleep. Before this, she had been in a half-sleeping, half-awake state, knowing King Shui was tending to her injuries. The shadow of this man grew clearer and clearer in her heart. This was already the second time. His image seemed to have been branded into her mind. She eventually lost consciousness and fell asleep, despite so many thoughts, with a trace of complexity in her heart. As King Shui walked out, Yi A Jiang was waiting outside for him. She asked in concern when she saw him, 
How is Sister Ching Cheng? No problem. She only needs some time to recover. She's currently asleep. King Shui smiled. Upon hearing that the Sunset Palace mistress was already asleep, Ye Jiang also abolished her thought of going to see her. Sighing in a light voice, this time, although we are victorious, this is merely the beginning. I'm really worried given my current state. King Shui knew that Ye Jiang was referring to the matter of her being pregnant. Right now, it was only around a month plus a bit more of time. Although it wouldn't affect anything even if she fought, King Shui would never let her participate in the battle. He could sense the precious life within Yi A Jiang's womb. Right now, King Shui's heart was a little heavy. But luckily, he felt that he would be able to handle the things to come. The strength of the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace was truly not bad. This also made King Shui more and more curious about the other oceanic areas, the depths of the Haohan continent, and the nine continent star ocean domains. It seemed like this world was truly very dangerous. Once he entered, he wouldn't have the freedom to act independently anymore and could only grit his teeth as he continued down the path. He wouldn't be able to retreat. And in any case, even if he wanted to retreat, there wouldn't be a path for him to do so. There's no need to worry with me here. Even if this third palace master cannot be considered among the peak strength of the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace, he should be among the upper ranks. They wouldn't want an all-out annihilation battle with us either. At the very least, they wouldn't ignite such a battle within the short term. King Shui held her hand tightly and spoke in a light-sounding tone. The third palace master might be very strong, but he is only ranked within the top five in the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace. At the very most, he can only be considered number five. The great palace master is the strongest, and she is a woman that has cultivated the Nine Yin Sacred Hands. Nine Yin Sacred Hands. King Shui stated in bewilderment. It's said that she has a supreme yin physique and an extremely powerful cultivation. The main thing is that no matter male or female, nobody would be able to withstand that powerful yin energy. She can use the energy to launch formless attacks. Yi A Jiang spoke in a tone of worry. When he heard this, King Shui felt even less worried. A supreme yin physique was of no threat to him, as he had a supreme yang physique. On a certain level, the two of them should be equal. As for who would be the stronger one, that would have to depend on individual cultivation level. If the other party was proficient in spirit energy type attacks, King Shui felt that he would definitely be able to defend against that. After all, he had roughly 70% immunity when it came to spirit energy attacks. Even his fleshy body was capable of enduring great damage. This was King Shui's greatest source of confidence. Chapter 1690. Women are trouble. The things here gradually settled down. King Shui initially assumed that the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace would soon find their way over. What surprised him was that even though half a month had passed, there were no signs of any commotion. This made him somewhat shocked. After all, the third palace master died here. If he assumed that his opponent was scared because of the strength he displayed, it would be somewhat ridiculous. But right now, King Shui also truly had no wish to go and antagonize the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace. If this was in the past, King Shui would definitely have hunted them down in their nest. But right now, he discovered that his strength was still not sufficient to be successful in every endeavor. Although there was no doubt he was very powerful, and that there weren't many who could defeat him in a one-on-one -on -one situation, it didn't mean that he was invincible. In addition, there were too many people he was close to around him. There were certainly some enemies who would stoop to any methods to deal with him. After this matter, 
Many powers in the surroundings felt great respect for the Sunset Palace. Before this, the North Sea Dragon King Palace was the strongest power here, and everyone also followed them blindly, taking him as their only guide. Now that the Sunset Palace replaced the North Sea Dragon King Palace as the leading power, there were many who came by to profess their determination to stand with them during this period of time. With regards to this, King Shui didn't feel anything. He thought of what these people did when the North Sea Dragon King Palace was vanquished. Since they could do this to a fallen leading power, would they do the same in the future to the Sunset Sea King Palace if it fell as well? Sharing calamity. These words were easily said, but not so easily done. It was too precious. Only in times of calamity would one's true feelings appear. There was also a sentence. A person of great moral stature does not remember, forgive, and forget the offenses committed by a person of low moral stature. The Sunset Palace mistress wasn't so polite to those who came to profess their determination to stand together. But she didn't do anything to deliberately make things difficult for them either. This was a normal social phenomenon. Right now, what needed to be done was to let the Sunset Sea King Palace continue growing stronger. If not, they may end up like the North Sea Dragon King Palace. Victors were kings, as it was all the survival of the fittest. There wasn't going to be sympathy among the cultivators of this strength-oriented world. Being merciful to one's enemies was equivalent to being cruel to oneself. Sometimes, Things would become like this, because of the bit-by-bit -bit accumulation of one's past experiences. This was a kind of rule. With no strength to change it, one could only follow. Very swiftly, the vast majority of the minor and major powers of this region all decided to stand with the Sunset Sea King Palace. This was also a kind of rule. They needed protection while the Sunset Sea King Palace needed these people for expansion. There was strength in numbers. No matter what, one could not neglect the gathered cohesiveness and energy that came from the soul when so many people gathered for a common cause. Such a force was similar to faith power. It was formless, but it no doubt existed. Those who stood at the pinnacle, either of a small region or a continent, would receive the respect and even belief of many people. This was the power of faith. Unknowingly, another month passed. Right now, Ye Jiang was about three months pregnant, although nobody could tell anything from the surface yet. There were no commotions from the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace, but it didn't mean that King Shui wouldn't take the initiative to do something. The injury the Sunset Palace mistress suffered had already been fully healed. Her strength wasn't affected and even seemed higher than before for some reason. This should probably be because she revived after she had almost died, sparking all her will and fighting spirit. She seemed no different from the past, and behaved very naturally when interacting with King Shui. She seemed to be much more relaxed now able to see past everything, but everyone could tell the emotions she had for King Shui. If one counted, King Shui had already saved her twice. A man she loved appearing twice at her most dangerous situations and saving her. How could the emotions she had for him not be deepened? As long as she could still see him like this, even if she couldn't become his woman, it was also a kind of happiness. Emotions were very strange. It wasn't necessary to become husband and wife nor was it necessary to have intimate relations. However, humans who could truly be tranquil and see past everything were a scarcity. After all, humans had the six desires and seven emotions and the lust of humans was sometimes unsuppressible. The more they tried to suppress it, the easier it would erupt. King Shui could naturally see this. He knew this woman was very smart and mature. It was said that men were creatures who thought using the little head. If he didn't have Ye Jiang here, 
he truly didn't know if he could withstand the beauty of the palace mistress. In his past life, for both men or women, it was always easier for a third party to appear when the relationship was a long-distance one. Such happenings had happened so much that they were basically uncountable. All women would eventually fall to the persistence of men. A beautiful woman would enjoy all the different fancy types of wooing techniques guys had and as for guys, they would think of a myriad of methods until one succeeded. Men couldn't withstand the temptation of women. King Shui felt that he had done moderately well in this aspect, but when he thought back again, he had actually fallen prey to temptation on a number of occasions. Ye Zhang didn't say anything. She wasn't suited to comment much on these methods. She understood this man before her very much. He had plenty of women, but he truly loved each and every one of his harem using all his heart. If things between him and the palace mistress really reached that extent, he himself would never let her leave. Right now, he didn't accept her. And although there might be other reasons, the major reason was still that his love for her had yet to reach that state of complete and utter devotion. Miyun Chinge always had a tranquil expression on her face, which made her very similar to Yi A Jiang. Truly, birds of a feather flock together. King Shui dared to guess that no matter if this woman loved him or not, she would never take the initiative to admit it. King Shui shook his head and thought about all these matters which couldn't be explained by logic. Humans were creatures of emotions and living in this world, naturally would cause one to experience friendship, kinship, love, and all other emotions. It was true that constant interaction would cause feelings to develop. This was something both males and females were susceptible to. Naturally, the feelings invoked during frequent interaction between men referred to friends who were so close that they were like brothers. This was also the difference between humans and demonic beasts. Humans had too many richly colorful emotions. What are you thinking about? Let me guess. Yi A Jiang smiled at him. Okay, take a guess then. King Shui laughed. Right now, much time had already passed, but there was still no upheaval from the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace. On the surface, it seemed that the Sunset Sea King Palace had already relaxed. I think you must be missing home, right? Yi A Jiang's eyes glittered with a kind of transcendent beauty so beautiful that it could cause men to be breathless. She was currently smiling sweetly as she spoke to King Shui. King Shui knew that Yi A Jiang was doing this on purpose. Whenever someone thought about something, one could tell hints of it from his eyes. He lifted his head and smiled. I'm fine. You don't need to think too much. You can say whatever you want to. Yi A Jiang also laughed as she added in a teasing manner. Are you longing for Sister Ching Cheng? I won't object to this. King Shui was speechless. He stared at the serious looking Yi A Jiang and shook his head. Do you women only think about such things? Didn't we just do that last night? Didn't I already say that the lust of women is at its peak during this period? Rascal! Are you asking for a beating? Yi A Jiang hurriedly raised her hand and covered King Shui's hand as a shy look flashed on her face. Chapter 1691. Eastern Peak Mountain, Meeting the Great Palace Master. Yi A Jiang didn't have such thick skin. Although she and King Shui were already husband and wife, she still couldn't endure King Shui's dirty talk. She could only shake her head helplessly. She had always been the most understanding one, and she was also very clear of the palace mistress's feelings for King Shui. Maybe it didn't matter in her heart if King Shui had one more woman. In her eyes, the sunset palace mistress wasn't an outsider. In fact, King Shui could already tell. If not, he wouldn't have asked her if she minded if there were other women around him. However, he could still understand the true thoughts in their hearts. But he also knew that Yi A Jiang was simply too kind-hearted. 
King Shui hugged her as they sat on the reclining chair. Today was a sunny and windy day and although cold and heat were unable to affect them, having good weather could still affect their mood. Just like now, King Shui felt that he was in a state of enjoyment. He had a beauty in his embrace and strength that could already be considered very terrifying, even if it couldn't dominate everything. Humans must learn the concept of contentment is happiness. Little fellow, you must be obedient in the future. King Shui gently rubbed Yi A Jiang's womb as he smiled. Yi A Jiang also had a blessed smile on her face. It's only three months old. How can our baby hear you? Staring at Yi A Jiang's current expression, King Shui felt very satisfied in his heart. Such satisfaction even exceeded the satisfaction he felt when breaking through to the next cultivation level. I'm filled with anticipation for the birth of our baby, Yi A Jiang spoke in a light voice. Right now, there was an indescribable gentleness on her face. Even King Shui felt somewhat jealous when he saw that. What sort of look is in your eyes? Why does it seem so bitter? Yi A Jiang laughed. King Shui bitterly smiled. Our baby isn't even born yet, but you already treat him with so much love. When it is finally born, will he exceed my place in your heart? Yi A Jiang directly wrapped his head with her dainty fist. You should learn to be more proper. It was true that King Shui didn't dare to leave here. He knew the threat the Dragon Wolf Palace represented and Yi A Jiang was still pregnant as well. Hence, he could only continue waiting here. He didn't feel that waiting here was tedious, and he had already planned it all out. With Yi A Jiang here, the days passed in an enjoyable fashion, and he didn't mind it at all. There were still no signs of action from the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace. This made King Shui feel that something strange was going on. The Sunset Palace did send some informants to gather info regarding the Dragon Wolf Palace and the news they obtained caused King Shui to feel somewhat shocked. There was an intense power struggle in the internal hierarchy of the Dragon Wolf Palace. There was no harmony between the Grand Palace Master and Second Palace Master. On the surface, the Dragon Wolf Palace might seem united, but there were splinters within, resulting in two factions. The Third Palace Master who died had belonged to the forces of the Second Palace Master. King Shui remembered that they had said the Grand Palace Master was someone with an extreme yin physique. To think there was an internal conflict in there. Initially, he thought that the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace was managed by siblings, but now, it seemed that their structure was somewhat like the Sunset Palace. It was just that their relationship wasn't as solid in comparison. Two months later, outside of his expectations, King Shui actually received an invitation card. This invitation card came from the Grand Palace Master of the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace, inviting him to a palace for a meeting. The invitation card didn't mention the agenda of the meeting, and the meeting place was set at the peak point of the Eastern Peak Mountain. King Shui felt somewhat curious about this. It had been more than five months since his battle with the Third Palace Master. Right now, a slight bump could already be seen on Yi A Jiang's figure, but the size wasn't as exaggerated as pregnant women in his previous world. The three women were all staring at King Shui, waiting for his decision. They already saw the content of the invite and knew that King Shui was invited by the Grand Palace Master of the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace. I heard that the Grand Master of the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace is a supreme beauty. Mayun Chinge laughed. In that case, Chinge, do you think our great protector Mr. King would go and meet her? The Sunset Palace mistress also smiled. King Shui knew that these two women were teasing him. He shook his head slightly with a smile and glanced at Ye Jiang. There were three women here but Yi A Jiang was his woman. 
Right now, he only wanted to hear her opinion. I'll support you. But no matter what you do, please remember to take care of your own safety. Yi Ye Jiang would never interfere in any of King Shui's wishes. The love between a husband and wife was truly deep, so much so that it engendered envy in others. The two other women smiled at each other, but they also didn't say anything. They didn't obstruct King Shui, and they couldn't do so even if they wanted to as well. King Shui eventually decided to head towards the peak of the Eastern Peak Mountain to meet with the Grand Palace Master. He wanted to see how the conflict between the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace and Sunset Sea King Palace would be settled. It wasn't a good idea to drag things on as well. There must be a resolution sooner or later. This was also not a bad idea and from a certain perspective, it meant that the other party could no longer endure. The arranged time was tomorrow at noon. King Shui set off late in the morning, and although his movements weren't that fast and the distance to the eastern peak mountain was pretty far, King Shui still had sufficient time to arrive. Eastern Peak Mountain This was a gigantic mountain range within the ocean domain and was also a mountain range which the North Sea Dragon King Palace had divided out. At the same time, this mountain range also represented the power of the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace, Eastern Peak Mountain and North Sea Dragon King Palace. The Sunset Sea King Palace also had some authority here. However, because the location of the North Sea Dragon King Palace wasn't very far from the Eastern Peak Mountain, the area to the west was mostly under their control. The environment of the ocean domains was better than the land domains of the continents. This was a world that completely toppled King Shui's understanding. For example, when in the water, only now did he knew the meaning of, a fish in water. It was just like how birds in the air couldn't feel air. Right now, when he was in the water, he couldn't feel it at all, completely in his element. All of these benefits were brought about by the Paragon water flight technique. King Shui stared at the boundless and continuous mountain range. The ups and downs of each mountain brought out the majesticness of the mountains in great detail without restraint. The place he was standing at was just so nicely at the peak of a mountain. Staring up ahead, the feeling of standing on a mountain peak felt excellent. In his past life, King Shui didn't have any experience conquering mountains, and there weren't any mountains as tall as this in his previous world. The highest mountain then was about 8,000 meters in altitude, and there naturally was a lack of oxygen that high, making climbing it an unsuitable activity for people with weaker physiques. The 8,000 meter mountain of his previous world couldn't even be considered a tall mountain here. The Eastern Peak Mountain alone was over a few ten thousands of meters, an inconceivable height if placed in the perspective of his pervious world. However, as King Shui stood there, he didn't feel the lack of oxygen. He felt the air grow even clearer and the spiritual energy grow more intense. There was more spiritual energy at the peak of mountains and also within the water. These were the mountains in the ocean domains. All of a sudden, King Shui felt a fluctuation. He turned his head and saw a figure appearing not far away from him. This figure exuded extreme grace and stood there, contemplating him seriously. However, judging from her aura, King Shui knew she wasn't calm at all. Chapter 1692. The Grand Palace Master is her. King Hanye. She slowly walked towards King Shui. Her figure was extremely alluring with all the curves in the right places. The contours of her body were exquisite and her pair of delicate snow-white legs were like those of an immortal maiden walking through the world, exuding a charm that could stir the soul of those who saw them. Her long hair draped over her shoulders, and her flowery eyes, straight nose, and cherry-like mouth truly made her an object of beauty that would mesmerize countless people. King Hanye, 
At this moment, King Shui was completely stunned. He never would have imagined that the great palace master would actually be her. This woman had a nine yin physique and only now did he realize that he had never forgotten her. King Shui recalled that some time ago, he had still thought of her. But never in his wildest dreams would he have imagined that even without returning to the green cloud continent, he would meet her again over here. Although he still couldn't be 100% sure that she was the great palace master of the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace, he felt very confident in his guess. The last he saw her was already decades ago, roughly 30 years if he recalled correctly. The passing of the years showed no signs on her beautiful face, but she now had a more mature beauty compared to the past, and her demeanor was even more mesmerizing. Her charm wasn't in any way inferior to Huoyan Lu Li. Huoyan Lu Li had the charm of a little woman, but King Hanye's charm leaned towards the imposing side. Ordinary maidens would have no way of being compared to her. Upon seeing her, King Shui thought back to the familiar scenes that happened in their dreams. The scene now seemed to have reverted to the time back then. The King Hanye who was in the dream stood stark naked before him. King Shui simply stared at her perfect body, her snow-white skin, and shapely breasts. Her flat stomach and the most exemplary willowy waist linked to a curvy and perky ass. Her jade legs were long and slender, and with no clothes covering it, they were mesmerizing to the extreme. After a moment, King Shui's clothes were all removed as well. His frame was packed with muscles, but it was not the unsightly type. The ancient strengthening technique he practiced was able to refine his bones, tendons, meridians, and flesh. Right now, his perfect muscled frame even shone with the light of perfection. King Hanye pulled King Shui to the bed. The two of them laid down there and stared into each other's eyes in this space of dreams. King Shui's fiery lust had already reached its peak, to the extent where he felt the flames of his own lust burning him. The nameless art he practiced, in addition to the ancient strengthening technique, frenziedly circulated energy within his body. King Shui finally moved. He embraced her and both his hands started roaming around her soft and elastic skin. He then buried his head and motorboated her, kissing and suckling on the pink tips of her snowy peaks. King Shui, who was in the dream, moved. After that, King Hanye felt a sense of relaxation, as a comfortable warmth began to circulate around her body. King Hanye then flipped her body around and pressed down on King Shui, straddling his hips. This beautiful vision and the sense of their bodies pressing together gave King Shui the knowledge of what it meant to have a taste of paradise. That smile, as well as her misty eyes, her slightly parted mouth, the delicate and soft feel of her body, and her lustful moans that lightly sounded out. The feeling in the dream, was extremely realistic. The two of them complemented each other perfectly, and seemed to be connected via telepathy. She would mirror each of King Shui's moves flawlessly at the slightest motion of his body. This was especially so when King Hanye knelt down on the bed. Her beautiful eyes flashed with a hint of shyness. She then lifted her beautiful ass up high as her moist cavern exuded a sense of welcome waiting for King Shui to penetrate her. When King Shui woke up from his daze, he realized King Hanye was already before him. He didn't think that he would have such a vivid imagination and right now, facing King Hanye, his expression was somewhat unnatural. King Shui awkwardly stared at her. Although nothing had happened in reality between them, King Shui knew that King Hanye was in love with him in the past, but things didn't really work out for one reason or another. He just didn't imagine that he would see her once again in this place. There was simply no end to wonders in the world. 
To think that King Hanye would actually be the great palace master of the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace. This made him extremely curious and only after a long time did he greet her. How are you? I'm okay. What about you? Her voice was filled with magnetism, and it was somewhat on the low side. However, those who heard the sound of her voice would feel their souls stirring. It was as though her voice contained some magical power. Right now, King Shui noticed that King Hanye was looking at him so fixedly that she didn't even blink. Great palace master, to think that we would actually meet in such a situation. King Shui shook his head and spoke in a somewhat helpless tone of voice. I also didn't expect it. I feel very happy. The fate you spoke of is truly a mysterious and wonderful thing. King Hanye shifted her gaze to the surroundings as she slowly spoke. King Shui also discovered that she was now much more independent compared to the past. Standing there, she was as charming as ever, and she also exuded a sense of indescribable beauty and sexiness. Is your grandfather still well? King Shui casually asked. King Hanye's expression involuntarily turned grim for a moment, before she lightly shook her head. He's no longer around. When he heard this, King Shui felt sorrow in his heart. Staring at King Hanye, back then this woman and her grandpa lived together. Her grandpa was none other than the great elder of the immortal sword sect, eventually becoming the sect leader in the end. King Shui could guess even without thinking that it should most probably be because of her grandpa's death that she chose to leave, which was how they could meet here again today. Sorry, don't be sad for things that have already happened in the past. Your grandfather would want you to live happily too. King Shui didn't know how to console her. It has already been many years. If grandpa was still alive, he would surely be very joyful with my current accomplishments. King Hanye's countenance returned to normal. I'm very curious. How did you become the great palace master of the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace? King Shui asked. I'm also very curious about how you became the protector of the setting Sun Sea King Palace. King Shui didn't have anything to hide. He summarized the events and told them all to King Hanye. Now that King Shui knew that the great palace master of the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace was none other than King Hanye, his state of heart grew much more relaxed. After he spoke, he also learned of King Hanye's experiences throughout these years. Compared to him, King Hanye's experiences were much more simple. After her grandpa was ambushed in the past, there was no more space for King Hanye in the immortal sword sect. There were many who had lusted after her beauty and wanted to act against her. Luckily, she had eventually managed to escape. Chapter 1693. Can you be my protector as well? This could also be considered a fortune. She had encountered the dragon wolf old ancestor by chance, while roaming the giant beast mountain range at the west of the Green Cloud continent. This was a major reason as to why she could become the great palace master now. It was just that the dragon wolf ancestor didn't have long to live and was on his deathbed. This was also the reason why he had granted King Hanye his inheritance, which made her so powerful now. The dragon wolf ancestor had only granted a portion of his strength to King Hanye. But even so, right now King Hanye's strength was immeasurably deep. Sadly, the dragon wolf ancestor had passed away ten years ago. Right now there were two factions in the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace. King Hanye as the great palace master was one faction while the other faction was headed by the second palace master. When the dragon wolf ancestor was alive, nobody dared to entertain any such thoughts or say anything, as King Hanye's strength was overwhelming. But after ten years, it was inevitable to have such conflicts, as a mountain cannot have two tigers. Right now, 
there were more people supporting the second palace master. After all, King Hanye was just a woman who was also an outsider. Although she had obtained the inheritance of the dragon wolf ancestor, they still found it hard to approve of her. The second palace master is truly a character. If I wasn't a woman, most probably he wouldn't have waited ten years to do this. But now, he can finally endure it no longer. Sadly, he doesn't know that he has just wasted the best opportunity. King Hanye stood beside King Shui. Both of them stood side by side, glancing at the foot of the mountain not far away. I believe this. It's only expected that a normal man would do this. King Hanye turned and glanced at King Shui. From the start, other than some agitation on her face, she looked extremely calm. As calm as water. Emotions between males and females were too complex. She was fond of King Shui, but she had experienced much, too much in these thirty years. The death of her grandfather and many other things caused her state of heart to be no longer as pure as before. Humans would always grow up. There would be times when they grew more mature. She didn't know that she had grown up, or that her love for him had faded as time passed. When she didn't see him, she would long for him. But when he was right in front of her eyes, her state of heart was calm instead. You are just like back then, truly a demon. King Hanye retracted her gaze and spoke lightly. King Shui could also sense the transformations in this woman. That sort of fluctuation in the inner heart was extremely obvious. He wasn't disappointed but felt somewhat relaxed instead. He smiled, I climbed up here step by step. King Hanye seemed as though she wanted to smile. At that very instant, extreme charm radiated out from her for just a moment. Even King Shui couldn't help but to be slightly stunned. King Hanye and him felt like they were strangers now. But then again, it was only to be expected. She didn't really have much interaction with King Shui and the separation had already lasted tens of years. It was only natural that the two of them became strangers. Although it was so, she still felt a sense of familiarity to him, an extreme familiarity. Earlier, she also thought of that dream that happened between them, but as her personality was always filled with charm, there wasn't too much change to her expression. That dream was sufficient to make her collapse and she would never forget it, ever. She always had him in her mind for so many years, waiting for his news, but sadly, she had never managed to find any traces of him. After all, she had already left the Green Cloud continent after that, while this place was the North Ocean region of the Haohan continent. She couldn't ignore him, but she felt like she no longer knew him. There was a point of her that hadn't changed. She still trusted this man. This man wouldn't have any designs on her and even if he had, she wouldn't mind it. I wonder what you plan to do regarding this problem of the Dragon Wolf Palace. King Hanye changed topic and spoke of the problem today. King Shui didn't feel strange. He then questioned her. What do you mean what I plan to do? You represent the Sunset Sea King Palace while I represent the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace. Regardless of the conflict between me and the Second Palace Master, on the surface, both of our palaces are at war. Tell me, what should I do? King Hanye spoke in a relaxed manner. Somehow, after encountering King Shui again, she felt pretty relaxed. There isn't any conflict between us unless you want us to fight each other. What do you mean there's no conflict? The Dragon Wolf Palace might obstruct the advance of the Sunset Palace. Nope. It's fine. No one can block them. The world is so vast and it isn't easy to get acquainted with someone. Tell me, do you think we need to fight it out here? It's unknown how large the North Ocean is. We should turn our gaze further. King Shui smiled. King Hanye's expression remained calm. 
she could see King Shui's point as well. She then sighed lightly. How good would it be if you were someone from my Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace? If that were the case, I wouldn't be afraid even if the heavens collapsed. King Shui started a little, because he couldn't understand those words. They sounded like a declaration of love. And although she had once told him that she was fond of him, that was many, many years ago. Right now, King Shui couldn't be sure if she still had feelings for him. He felt that time could change everything. Thirty years of time wasn't a short period. He didn't know what to say. He knew that since King Hanye could arrange a meeting with him, she should be very clear of his circumstances. She should also know that Yi A Jiang was his wife, among others. Although I'm not someone from the Dragon Wolf Palace, we are still friends. That is, unless you are unwilling to acknowledge me, someone from your past. King Shui smiled. He didn't need to act as though they were still very close. There was simply no need for that. After King Shui knew that King Hanye was the great palace master, he felt very relaxed in his heart. Also, he heard that there was some conflict between her and the second palace master and he smelled an opportunity. If the Sunset Palace could form an alliance with the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace, they would be able to invade the Northern Ocean region quicker. I don't treat you as a friend. King Shui's countenance had no fluctuation when he heard her words. King Hanye then slowly continued, In my heart, you are always my kin. King Shui stared at her bright eyes. It was very rare for him to see such pure eyes filled with innocence. There were no complex emotions in him at all. Then just treat me like your elder brother. How do you plan to deal with the second palace master? King Shui solemnly nodded his head as he stated. You are still like this. I'm sure I'm older than you. Anyway, there will definitely be a death match between me and the second palace master. King Hanye smiled at King Shui as her countenance grew relaxed. I will aid you. You don't need to interfere in this. I can do it with my strength. If it were ten years ago, I might not be confident but now, he isn't my opponent. After I gain control of the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace, why don't you come over here and be my protector? King Hanye laughed. But I'm already the protector of the Sunset Seeking Palace. There isn't any conflict. Protectors have the most freedom and an individual can be the protectors of many sects, as long as he can manage his time. This was the truth. Just like back then, King Shui was the protector for the Hundred Miles City, a country after that, and a continent after that. As long as there was no clash, everything was fine. Protectors had the most freedom. It's an indication of one's strength. Protectors wouldn't be able to become the protectors of two opposing powers, but there are still some exceptions, albeit very rarely. Chapter 1694. The Change of Events, Spirit Fish, Revival Pill. Did you think that I could understand it that well? King Shui smiled at King Hanye. That isn't important. I'm willing to let you play. King Hanye said seriously. But she quickly realized the faulty wording of what she had said. What she had meant was that she was willing to let King Shui figure it out. Willing to let him become the protector of the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace. And continued quickly. Understand that I am willing to let you become the protector of this place. I get it. King Shui said to her with a smile. Before. He was really shocked by what she had said, because that sentence was too full of trust. Until now King Shui still had a surreal feeling. The charm of language was so strong. He couldn't believe that it could be used to provoke a response to this extent. King Hanye's face was extremely red. She also knew that they couldn't overanalyze this. The more they would talk about it, the more they'd try to hide it. It was best to just change to another topic. King Hanye looked into the distance, 
saw the faraway clouds like smoke and fog, and lightly said, What is your answer? Yes, I'll agree with you. Here in this dangerous North Ocean domain, we can only go further by uniting with each other. I'm glad you agreed. King Shui smiled. Although King Hanye did not explicitly say that she would ally with the Sunset Sea King Palace, it was implied. When King Shui returned to the Sunset Sea King Palace, he told them about how he met with the head palace mistress, making the three women sob, especially Ye Jiang. After all, King Hanye was from the Green Cloud Continent. This is too good. Oh, right. King Shui, isn't the head palace mistress beautiful? The Sunset Palace Lord laughed loudly. She is very beautiful. You have a point. King Shui looked at the Sunset Palace Lord questioningly. I don't have much to say about women, so you don't have much to say about her. The Sunset Palace Lord normally would joke around with King Shui like this. For some reason she had been able to increase in strength by a lot, and was also able to do things with King Shui with extreme ease. If he let King Shui know that she liked him, he wouldn't deliberately try to keep her from him. No way, King Shui said decisively. Did elder sister Ching Cheng want us to go in order? We can't let someone else take her place, Miyun Chinge joked. Yes, even following the order, Chinge is still in front, the Sunset Palace Lord said. Miyun Chinge decisively refused to talk. There wasn't a single time where she was easy going with the Sunset Palace Lord, especially with the situation at hand. Although King Hanye knew that the situation at the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace could be solved by herself, King Shui wasn't at ease with that, because he didn't know what she would do. He decided to go with his own method to keep an eye on the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace. The Jade Emperor B. King Shui had now was large in size and it could also fight. Unfortunately they were currently in the water, so it couldn't be sent out. But King Shui still had a small thing that he could send. Spirit Fish The spirit fish that King Shui had wasn't a normal spirit fish. It already had a bond towards him, as though they were blood-related, and it could send information back so he could use this spirit fish to record what was happening within a certain window of time. The spirit fish in the water was an interesting existence. It sacrificed its attack power in exchange for safety. Normally, there weren't many demonic beasts that would attack spirit fish, as it was strong in stealth and speed. King Shui then let this spirit fish follow King Hanye so that he would be notified as quickly as possible if anything were to happen. The realm of the Violet Jade Immortal of the Ninth Layer made King Shui's available time refresh much faster. Now he felt as though he could never deplete his time, so his normal stay in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal usually didn't even exceed four hours. Of course, he would occasionally stay for six hours. The medicinal herbs and sitch in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal made King Shui have a stronger vitality. The spiritual strength that he had also became stronger and stronger. Standing in the midst of the medicinal herbs, King Shui was at peace. He was already lost in a trance. He felt as though he was unable to place where he was. This situation was really bad so he basically stopped practicing for more than 10 days. There were some times when people would be a little disoriented and the most extreme examples would lose their identities. If he waited until any of the extremes happened, then the extreme happiness or extreme sadness would cause a loss of self. Another possibility occurred if peace or a type of dependable affliction was sustained for too long. Just like the upper class of the last dynasty, they would become dry and dull as time passed. King Shui felt that he was falling into one of the previous situations, but he was at the end of it. He obtained a lot, which he knew, and made him a little worried that one day he would lose it all. 
This type of worrying about personal gains and losses would cause problems very easily. The first time King Shui was affected by this feeling, he felt a little unsteady. This made him very worried. If he couldn't pass this stage, it would be very hard for his training to reap further benefits. He wasn't too worried about his foundation. He trusted his strength. It was just that he was concerned that it would be hard for him to advance. A lot of time had passed, and ever since he had entered the ninth level of the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal, he didn't feel like he had improved at all. The King Shui with nothing to do decided to practice the Tai Chi Fist in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal to pacify himself, with no aim in mind. This was a type of casual practice to the peak with no rules, but each move was a new boundary. Using the phrase, like moving clouds and flowing water, wouldn't be enough to describe the boundaries that King Shui had reached. His huge breaths moved with a graceful cleverness, and his presence was also incomparably fine. Although his heart was still unable to be pacified, it was much better than before. This was the mystical thing about the Tai Chi Fist. Even at King Shui's level, there was still room for improvement. This practice lasted for most of the day. He felt that life still had to go on so the practices also had to go on. The people around him still needed him and his own life still had more to explore the Five Tiger Immortal Sect, the North Sea Dragon Palace, the Ocean Domain, the Central Continent Star Ocean Domain, among other places. Though he was disoriented, he still had a short-term goal, or it could be said to be a long-term goal. He simply ate some stuff, then started to practice medicine. It didn't seem like his experience in alchemy had improved much, but in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal it slowly increased. Revival Pill. From the name, the effect was obvious, but King Shui believed that if he could make it, it would have a great effect. He didn't believe that this world would have a pill that brought the dead back to life. This world's so-called, revival pills, all had a catch to them. From his knowledge, he knew that the dead person could not have been dead for more than three days for him or her to be revived. Once that three-day threshold passed, no pill would be able to save them and they were completely dead. It was possible to use some pills to treat critical wounds, to make it easier for them to live. This way they would have a longer window of time before they died, but as long as they were dead, there was a three-day limit, or at least that's what it was like for the pills that King Shui knew of. As for the revival pill, King Shui checked whether he needed more experience. Waiting for the prescription to come out still took a bit of time. Chapter 1695, Bottleneck, Perplexion, The Second Palace Lord. These days, King Shui rarely used up his time in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. He was still used to the time limit before. It was just that this time he stayed in there until he was almost about to be kicked out. The time that passed outside was still six hours, but the time that passed in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal increased onefold. This state had been around for quite a while, but it wasn't that easy to remove. It needed to be diluted with some other things, to make it much easier to remove the lock. It couldn't be opened, so all he could do was let it be. After he came out, the sky was a little bright. He was just going to check on Yi A Jiang. After all, he could go two hours earlier, which also happened to be before she woke up. When he went outside today though, he saw that she was already awake in her drunk-like face. She was pregnant to the point that it was obvious now. A smiling King Shui went over to hold her, and slowly paced around the garden. Is it that something is bothering you? Why don't you tell me? so that I can help you with it. Yi A Jiang naturally was able to tell that King Shui was thinking about something. Although King Shui didn't deliberately show her, he also didn't deliberately hide it. 
The women close to him would know when he was thinking about stuff. But now, only Ye A Jiang would ask him about it. Nothing much. Only that I don't know why I'm suddenly so disoriented. My strength also hasn't improved much. King Shui said this with a smile, as though he didn't really care. You're too young. Your experiences so far can be said to be plentiful. But after all, you don't have the molding that age brings, Ye A Jiang said warmly after thinking about it. King Shui was stunned, stood where he was for a while, looked at Ye A Jiang, and then said warmly, it seems like you have a point. Really? Ye A Jiang blinked those beautiful eyelashes. Hers was an attraction that didn't belong to this world. King Shui kissed her from her head to her erotic lips, then said, smiling, actually I also felt that way. For example I never thought that a girl like you would like me, become my wife to the point that I'd be afraid to lose you, but wouldn't be able to say it. Also, some things made me a little worried about gains and losses, making me disoriented, but worried. Ye A Jiang held King Shui's hand. Since when did you become so unsure of yourself? You were never like this before. Maybe it's because the more I have, the less boldness I have, the more I'm afraid of losing stuff, since I had nothing before. You feel like a coward. Why don't I feel that? Ye A Jiang said with a smile. King Shui giggled. Sometimes, I'm pretty bold. After talking with Ye A Jiang for a while, King Shui found that he was much better than before, and more relaxed. Although Ye A Jiang didn't say much, she was so special to King Shui, a teacher and a friend, a close female friend who held a very special place in King Shui's heart. The little one has been moving a lot lately. It kicks me at least once a day, Ye A Jiang said with a smile full of blessedness. He dares to kick my woman. Let me chastise him when he comes out. King Shui crouched in front of Ye A Jiang. You dare. Ye A Jiang laughed as she said it. Seeing King Shui's smile filling with warmth, she only had this man in her heart. No matter what she did for him, she was still willing. The only reason that she changed so much was because of him. Is there nothing going on at the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace? Ye A Jiang reached out and stroked King Shui's head. This was a nice picture. King Shui also liked this. If it were another woman, it would have been hard for King Shui to let her do this. The head palace lord has already started to move. The second palace lord's strength has already diminished by one third. King Shui saw the current situation in the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace through his spirit fish. Ye A Jiang already knew that the palace lord was King Hanye who had come from the Green Cloud Continent and had known King Shui previously. When she came to the northern sea territory of the Haohan Continent, even she felt that she was close, so King Shui must have felt so even more. Ever since she had gotten pregnant, whenever she felt the life in her stomach, she felt her heart jump a little. Thinking about life in the future made her full of hope and strength, but a little indifferent to King Shui. This type of indifference wasn't truly feeling uncaring. It was more like she felt numb to many desires. King Shui also saw this, and he felt a little depressed as he bitterly smiled at Ye A Jiang. Has my place gone down a step? Stinky bastard, you're going to haggle about this? Ye A Jiang knew what King Shui meant. Ye A Jiang's excitable temperament was full of destructive power. As she saw King Shui being a little stunned, she continued, Will she be okay? She should be fine. Her body is innately strong. Normally she'd do well against me. I don't know about that second palace lord, but I think he will lose to her. Why? Because the head palace lord is a woman. The reason King Shui agreed to not interfere was because of that reason. He even gave King Hanye more than ten years of time, because he was sure that he would lose. 
He didn't do anything ten years ago and he still wasn't going to now. King Shui was able to understand men pretty easily because he was a man, but he wouldn't allow himself to make a move in front of the woman he loved. This threshold wasn't one that anyone could pass. The language of love was something that no one could really understand. Ye Jiang looked at King Shui. You understand women this much. I just understand myself. King Shui smiled. But some things seemed to be very unreliable. Because after many days, King Shui stumbled upon something unexpected as he was pacing around by himself. He encountered the head palace lord of the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace. There were about two months left before Yi A Jiang's child would be born. For some reason he was a little confused and talked with her a little farther. The man in front of him had a toned body, with thick eyebrows, large eyes, and a straight nose. His eyes which were unusually bright seemed to possess a sort of farsightedness. This was a man at peak condition. He was very handsome with an indeterminate age, but he seemed very young and mature. King Shui was able to see the second palace lord through the spirit fish, and it was because of that that he could admit it, but he hadn't personally seen the large force of impact. As he looked at the tranquil look in the man across from him, he knew that he had rushed over himself. You must be the man that King Hanye likes so much. The second palace lord said a phrase that King Shui didn't know how to decipher. King Shui didn't say anything, and quietly watched him. Every now and then, I see her taking out a picture with you on it. The second palace lord didn't let King Shui ask anything and continued talking, his voice remaining quiet as before. However, King Shui felt something weird about that peaceful voice. Chapter 1696. Battles, Dragon Wolf Jump, Recovery and Improvement. From his voice, King Shui could tell that the second palace lord liked King Hanye a lot. This wasn't weird. It was just that he was now sure of it. But King Shui didn't think that King Hanye would have a picture of him. If he guessed correctly, that picture was drawn by her, and she even let the second palace lord see it, which felt a little weird to King Shui, but he knew that she was doing it deliberately to spite the second palace lord. She was still indifferent. If she really cared, it seemed that it was hard for her to say, unless she knew a few years ago that he would be where he was. If that was the case, it made King Shui feel a little uneasy from head to foot, and made him think that she was indifferent even more. King Shui didn't know why he was suspicious of King Hanye's actions before, but perhaps it was because more time had passed. He shook his head to get rid of these eerie thoughts. I am King Shu. King Shui didn't affirm whether he was the person that King Hanye liked, but he also didn't deny it. He felt that the topic was not one that he needed to talk to the man in front of him about. I came here today to find you, the second palace lord said warmly. Now he was even more peaceful than before, to the point where King Shui couldn't feel the waves of his heart. It was hard to determine the strength of the other at this point. Perhaps the auras of some people were really weird. Even if he was stronger, it was hard to feel. Now what are you here to talk to me about? King Shui already was able to guess a big part of it. The other person wasn't here to come drink with him. I don't see anything too special about you. So I was wondering why she liked you. The second palace lord's aura became very sharp, like the glow from razor-sharp needles. The smile on King Shui's face didn't change and he wasn't made uncomfortable by the presence of the other person. He said to him, Before I thought that you weren't too bad, but now I know why she doesn't like you. Why? The color of the second palace lord's face changed. This time he couldn't keep his composure. King Hanye was his weakness. Just like the seven inches of a snake, once it had been grasped, nothing it could do was effective. What King Shui said had hit where it hurt most. 
This move made his mind very turbulent. A man, a strong, handsome man has vision and boldness. You can assess whether you possess any of those qualities. King Shui didn't have any good feelings toward that man. But not because he liked King Hanye. Ha ha ha. The boldness of a man isn't to let his own woman be taken. The second palace lord suddenly laughed. Now it's even harder for me to acknowledge you. King Shui smiled. I don't need you to acknowledge me. All I know is that you'll have nothing to say once I beat you. The second palace lord's eyes turned a shade of green. As though they were a wolf's. The eyes of the dragon wolf. In an instant, the eyes of the second palace lord became a dark red, emanating an ominous glint that threatened to kill. People that didn't have strong willpower would have been scared stiff. Of course, that would only apply to normal people or people that had low cultivation. King Shui wasn't so easily affected, but he knew these eyes of the second palace lord weren't only for scaring enemies. The dragon wolf eyes were an innate bloodline battle skill that transferred through the dragon wolves. Once the dragon wolf eyes were activated, they would greatly increase sensory powers. It would also see the actions of other people at a slower speed. As for how much slower, that would depend on the user's strength and the opponent's strength. Besides this, the dragon wolf eyes were also called the eyes of hell as it could affect spirits. This was not affected by strength, and since soul energy could be counted as spirit energy, if one's spirit energy wasn't stable enough, it would also be affected by these eyes. King Shui's eyes squinted. It was just like the glow from needles, a gold, pale light of disorientation. Buddha's true eyes. King Shui thought that it was better to be careful. He couldn't be careless during times like this. After all, he couldn't determine the strength of the second palace lord of the eastern peak dragon wolf palace. People that were able to do that would potentially be able to cause him harm. If he died because he was careless, then tears would come too late. From what King Shui knew so far, even the strongest martial artists had one life. If they lost their head, they'd die. Even if they were revived the head wouldn't grow back, but regrowing hands, feet, legs, or arms were still possible. Two red beams of spirit energy and two pale beams of gold hit each other, affecting the area to an unthinkable degree. They even stuck together and didn't dissipate, a colorful chlorine-like energy emanating where the beams crossed. King Shui moved. The golden battle halberd appeared in his hand within a second, and he raised all his strength to the apex. Sometimes the one that attacked first had the advantage, and since he understood the dragon wolf palace a bit, he knew that their specialty was on sensory skills, meaning that their strength was the same as a dragon, their smell, ferociousness, and stealth the same as wolves. Facing this, he knew that he couldn't cheap out on defense. King Shui's specialty was his defense, but his attack was also just as good. In addition, he had speed, but he didn't want to use his defense, instead deciding to use his strong attack power to wear down the enemy. He didn't like the person in front of him. Even if he wouldn't be his enemy forever, he would never his friend, either. At times like this, he couldn't afford to give himself any doubt. Nine Stances of Ancient Divine Battle Technique His nine stances of ancient divine battle technique were practiced and combined in many different ways, and now they were already combined with the five elements divine refining technique. He could quickly destroy his enemy's weapons with the technique's strong attack power. He already combined his spirit energy and his own origin key. Although it hadn't been brought to the point of perfection, King Shui had already brought it to a higher stage. The world of the divine was just the heavenly Tao power and this mysterious power. 
Bang! The golden battle halberd and the weapon of the second palace lord clashed and a colorful light shined. In an instant, the hills around the area were leveled and smoke diffused, but was quickly combined into the surrounding water, which boiled with excitement. The power of the dragon wolf clan was indeed strong. King Shui's own strength could be said to be pretty strong too, especially his physical body but all his attack did was move his opponent back a few steps. It didn't even hurt him. This already made him a little surprised. But the one who was more surprised was the second palace lord, who was confident in his ability against his opponent. Otherwise, he wouldn't have come to look for King Shui. The mountains and rivers burst. King Shui's golden battle halberd swept down from its towering state strength of the heavenly Tao power. In this instant, the surroundings seemed to quiet and the entire sky seemed to fall. The golden battle halberd brought the strength of 300,000 catties onto the second palace lord. Now, King Shui's blood was also racing, his entire body filled with energy. He needed to throw out all of his energy, and the person in front of him was the perfect target. The color of the second palace lord changed. He could feel that the blow coming at him was very strong. He was confident that he could take it, but he was a little scared. Even if he took this one, there would be another. If this continued, he could only be passive. Dragon Wolf Leap. This move was beyond belief. His body seemed to have moved a little, but it seemed to have some impact on vision. This jump seemed to have leaped out of the three boundaries and five paths. King Shui's eyes grew bright. It was a very profound step, and relying on this jump beyond belief, he could move his whole body back through many techniques. As King Shui was stunned, the second palace lord moved. Two dark green spikes appeared on his forearms. His arms were thin and coarse. On it was a fog that was like black smoke, which signaled to other people that it was poison. The body of the Nine Yang. Again, King Shui's body was impervious to more than a hundred poisons, but that didn't mean that he couldn't be affected by poisons at all, so he wasn't going to be careless. Area Dominance. A white circle shone with him at the center. A fresh and clean air emitted. After so many years, his area dominance had grown a lot stronger. With the effects of area dominance, King Shui was more at rest. Nine Palace Laws. Dragon Wolf Soul Chasing Flaming Explosive Chop. It was as King Shui was going to drag the second palace lord into the nine palace laws that he used the Dragon Wolf Leap again. He also wasn't affected by the nine palace laws at all. Actually, King Shui already felt something on the previous leap. Perhaps the nine palaces could surround him, but with his current abilities that was not to be the case. After all, the previous leap had proven his strength. The two sharp spirit thorns burst out a blinding light as though they were two small suns. Unfortunately, the light with the traces of red inside, but black outside was stranger than anything else. When King Shui was covered, his body seemed to feel heavier than ever. It was because there was something he didn't know. Then suddenly, the second palace lord's shadow became light, then disappeared. It was at that moment that King Shui knew to use the yin-yang image in the sea to quickly whirl it over, making his brain clear up for a bit. However, he was already pierced in the chest by the spirit thorns of his enemy. A gold light shined. King Shui's eyes lit up with a fierce light. Not shining and not escaping, the golden battle halberd in his hand struck at the second palace lord with the foundational lie stance. Making the difficult easy, King Shui's lie stance was one of the simplest moves, but this simple thrust became dazzling this time, even making King Shui feel that this thrust was too beautiful. It was somewhat effective. King Shui knew the Lai stance had broken through a boundary that had held for more than ten years. 
The second palace lord saw that golden light, saw King Shui's expression, and backed off without waiting for the move. King Shui's thrust wasn't going to be dodged this easily. As the opponent tried to use the dragon wolf leap to avoid the strike, it pierced his left shoulder and then cut through half of it. The second palace lord's eyes became frightened along with a tinge of resentment. He stared at the chopped off shoulder with a pale face. This was too unexpected. As he stared blankly, a gush of fresh blood shot out. It was good that that period didn't last for too long. The second palace lord blocked the flow of blood there with his hand and held the blood vessel, waiting for the blood to stop. His face had already lost all its color. King Shui knew this wasn't only because of the loss of blood. He was unwilling, angry, despairing. Losing one of his arms meant that he had lost a lot of his fighting strength, but King Shui didn't dare to be careless. He knew that even though the second palace lord had lost a lot of his power, the desperate measures that he might use would increase the possibility of danger more than ever. Chapter 1697. Killing Second Palace Lord. The second palace lord began to lift up his head after a long while. He had already regained the former peace in his eyes, but with added unidentified emotions as well. King Shui couldn't detect the hatred or malice that were previously present in his eyes. Instead, he was able to see an unprecedented peace lingering from within. King Shui was a bit perturbed by the unusual display of behavior. The surroundings were quiet and the air remained fresh as always. The tremor from before had already decontaminated the flow of water around the surroundings. King Shui continued to stare at the second palace lord as the thought of Qin Hanye surfaced in his mind. He couldn't be sure that she would be the same Qin Hanye that he knew several years ago. Based on the current circumstances, he surmised that she wouldn't have changed that much from how she was before. The second palace lord had now lost half of his arm and his weapon. Likewise, he looked at King Shui coldly and slowly lifted up a weapon on his right arm to point at him. King Shui didn't expect him to make the first move even in this kind of situation. However, it wasn't surprising to him. At this level, some actions could not be measured by conventional means anymore. Besides the two of them here, there was no one else in the area. The reason the second palace lord blocked King Shui in this place was most likely due to his intention of killing him. The more secluded the area was, the better. He knew that he would have to get rid of this man if he wanted to have King Hanye for himself, just so she could forget about him completely. The second palace lord began to make his move. His movement in that sudden moment shocked King Shui because the stream of a shadow had formed around the second palace lord. This shadow was a demonic beast with a wolf body and a dragon head. He could see it clearly, yet this was definitely a shadow, a realistic shadow. The dragon wolf shadow wasn't that big, merely the height of three adult humans. The shadow was extremely substantial and grim, with only the half of its front legs somewhat obscure. Nonetheless, they were still visible. The shadow charged toward King Shui in a blink of an eye while viciously drawing out its giant front claws. Sizzle. A black hole then swiftly appeared in the sky. The sharp attack had exuded a compelling aura that felt as if one could be torn apart any time soon. King Shui lit up as he realized that the force this dragon wolf shadow had struck was the combined energy of the force of Heavenly Tao, Origin Qi, and Spirit Energy. A smile curved on King Shui's lips as he swept his golden battle halberd to attack as well. Bang bang bang! A vacuum of space quickly appeared in the surroundings. The monstrous explosion had destroyed everything in its place. King Shui did not move backwards and managed to counter against his opponent's attack, while pushing him back. 
He was now aware that the shadow of the dragon wolf was the second palace lord's greatest trump card. If King Shui wasn't able to control this type of energy, he would just be beaten blindly by it. However, it was different this time. The second palace lord was already cornered by King Shui. Given that the second palace lord was pushed back, during the short moment when the shadow of the dragon wolf stopped, King Shui did not hesitate further and quickly charged toward his opponent. Bang bang! After a few moves, the second palace lord had already been returned to his human form. He was trembling, with blood dripping all over his body. His dejected eyes were focused on King Shui. If he wasn't able to defeat his opponent with the dragon wolf shadow, then there was no doubt in his mind that he would definitely die today. The wounds on his arms were not mild. It was because of his injuries that his strength was affected. He had also been severely wounded after he had fought in the battle earlier. King Shui wielded the golden battle halberd and slowly walked toward the second palace lord. However, the second palace lord was the one who spoke first. King Hanye is yours. I won't fight with you anymore. King Shui looked at the second palace lord with a frown creased on his forehead. He didn't like hearing words coming out from the second palace lord's mouth, and he didn't particularly like seeing his face either. This kind of behavior didn't seem to make him a man at all. I will not fight her for the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace anymore. Just let me go. The second palace lord continued with a calm demeanor. King Shui was shocked by his words. When he first saw the second palace lord earlier, he thought that a talented man such as himself would not be one to give up that easily. King Shui had an impression that he would be a person who was willing to die rather than surrender himself. Yet, he didn't expect this the second palace lord to concede defeat this easily. Instead of expressing his opinion directly, King Shui continued to approach the second palace lord. It wasn't necessary to drive a person to the edge, however. Initially, King Shui had planned to kill him, but now he was unsure as he pondered whether he should insist on killing him or not. King Shui didn't intend on killing someone in this sort of situation. He really had a hard time taking his life, as he would feel uncomfortable killing this person through this way. However, there might be problems in the future if he decided not to pull the roots after cutting the weed. King Shui kept looking at him in order to see the hatred and malice in his eyes. As long as he was able to see any of those emotions, he could have easily killed him off. However, there were none of those in his eyes. King Shui curled a smile on his face. Without any hesitation, he took his golden battle halberd in his hand and pierced through the second palace lord's heart. The calmer this man was, the more suspicious it was, especially during this sort of situation. Because of that, King Shui did not hesitate to kill him off. Everything would end once he had died. The second palace lord gazed at King Shui with bewilderment. Even until the point he died, he did not close his eyes. Based on his understanding toward King Shui, he shouldn't have died. If he wasn't dead, he would have a chance to exact revenge in the future. Unfortunately, King Shui didn't revel in the death of the, the second palace lord too much when he saw him falling over. With one swipe, King Shui disposed the corpse by dissipating it in water. After standing on the same spot for a long time, King Shui then returned to the Sunset Sea King Palace. He didn't go back to the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace, for the Second Palace Lord was already dead. He believed that King Hanye would be able to have control of the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace in her hands very soon. If that was the case, then even if there was a small breach, it would be crucial to the development in the future. When he went back to the Sunset Sea King Palace, he saw a laid-back Ye Jiang reading a book inside a pavilion near the pond at the courtyard. 
Her beautiful silhouette and her demeanor seemed to fit completely within the realms of heaven and earth. This was a harmonious and superb scenery. When she heard King Shui's footsteps approaching, Ye Jiang turned her head to look at him. Seeing an understanding smile granted to her by King Shui, she gave him a look that could overthrow nations. Unconsciously, King Shui put on the happiest smile on his face. His emotions were easily influenced by Ye Jiang's state of mind. Good boy. Were you naughty? King Shui knelt beside Ye Jiang and pressed half of his face at her slight stomach bump. Who did you fight with again? Ye Jiang asked softly. Even though King Shui had changed his clothes, she was able to sense that he had fought with someone. Perhaps this was an intuition of hers. The second palace lord of Dragon Wolf Palace. He is gone forever. King Shui calmly replied. His voice did not waver in the slightest. Ye Jiang raised her head and gently caressed King Shui's head. Her fingers slipped into his hair. She did not say anything else. Both of them enjoyed the silence for the moment. I don't know when I will be able to settle down. I yearn for stability, but it seems getting peace isn't that easy. Ye Jiang let out a quiet sigh. In King Shui's heart, Ye Jiang was a pure and otherworldly woman. Yet because she was such a woman, she could never escape some of her mortal battles, no matter how hard she tried. Trust me, you will get some peace, and soon at that. King Shui was unsure despite saying those words. He also knew that Ye Jiang was extremely worried about the battle because of her pregnancy at the moment. I am already very content about my life. No matter what, I am very happy. The only thing I fear is that I might have troubled this little guy. Ye Jiang smiled and shook her head. At this exact moment, she was so holy and pure. King Shui was dazed and stunned by her demeanor. Chapter 1698. Ye Jiang had conceived a son, King Xu. I'm going to be jealous of this little fellow. King Shui chuckled. Hearing those words, Ye Jiang let out a soft giggle. Anyone could tell how happy she looked. She turned toward King Shui and chided him. What are you jealous about? My position has been degraded by this little guy, even before he's out in this world. I fear that once he's born, you will burn the bridge between us and forget about me. You are an asshole. The news of the second palace lord's death was quickly spread out. Even though no one had seen his corpse, there were many ways one could find out if he was still alive or not in this world. As the Grand Palace Mistress of Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace, King Hanye had naturally become the palace mistress of said palace. In actuality, even if King Shui didn't kill the second palace lord, King Hanye would still have been able to assume control over the Dragon Wolf Palace. King Hanye's prestige was quite high in the Dragon Wolf Palace, even after all these years. King Shui didn't expect to see King Hanye at the Sunset Sea King Palace a month later. When the Sunset Palace mistress, Miyun Chinge, and King Hanye arrived to the small courtyard, King Shui was stunned. The three ladies seemed to be radiating in splendor when they stood close together. King Shui wasn't shocked because of their beauty, as this wasn't his first time seeing their beautiful appearances, but he was shocked because the three ladies were quite harmonious when they stood together, as if they had been friends for many years. What? Am I not welcome? King Hanye smiled when she saw King Shui's expression. This woman who possessed the most amorous eyes, charming personality, and demeanor, was alluring in her manner of speech and action. Compared to how she was twenty years ago, she was even more bewitching and seductive now. King Shui rubbed his nose and smiled. Why would you think that? Come and sit here. He then gestured to the three ladies to sit down inside the pavilion. 
Yi e Jiang could no longer participate in such occasions like this anymore. Most of the time, she would stroll around, relax, or take a rest to read books and whatnot. How's the Dragon Wolf Palace? King Shui asked while pouring her a cup of tea. It's still all right. Any movements I make can't be hidden away from you. You should be able to see all of my actions with your own eyes. King Hanye looked at King Shui with exhilaration. She had already noticed the existence of the spirit fish. King Shui laughed awkwardly. He didn't intend to hide it from her at that time. So it was normal that she was able to find out about it sooner or later. King Shui, do you know why little sister Hanye came today? The Sunset Palace mistress asked while looking at King Shui. King Shui, on the other hand, was acting a bit unnatural. He had a thing or two going on between the three ladies. He was aware of the Sunset Palace mistress' feelings, and he had always been maintained a safe distance with Miyun Chinge. Even though it was a bit awkward when her wounds were being tended by King Shui, they were now acting like any ordinary friends would. The most complicated relationship he had among these three was with King Hanye. She had feelings for King Shui ever since they were at Green Cloud Continent. Both of them had memories that could never be forgotten with each other. However, her body had never been touched by him before. Even so, her memories with him did not pale in comparison with any sort of physical contact. However, it had been a long time since then. Nowadays, King Shui couldn't tell what she was thinking for certain. Humans would continuously change and time would change everything. Things could have a drastic change after a long period of time. I really don't know. Why don't we congratulate the Grand Palace Mistress today? King Shui said in a slow pace. Of course we are going to congratulate her. But we are going to add one more thing to celebrate. Little sister Hanye came today just so we can form an alliance to go through thick and thin together. We came here to ask for your decision on this. The Sunset Palace Mistress smiled as she gazed at King Shui. King Shui knew that they were just trying to demonstrate his importance by doing this in this way. In actuality, there was no need to go through him for such matters, much less asking him to make the decision for the alliance. However, he knew the reason for that was because they had a relationship that was unknown and complicated between one another. It's fine if you all make the decision for this sort of matter. King Shui said, courteously. Am I not welcomed here, or do you just not want to see me in this place? King Hanye said, lowering her head slightly. At that moment, Sunset Palace Mistress and Miyun Chinge looked at King Shui with amusement. How many terrible love affairs did this man have? All right, I'm afraid of you. Alliance or cooperation, even if both of you merge into one Sea King Palace, I have no objection. King Shui responded quickly. Then we will listen to you. We planned on merging the Sunset Sea King Palace and Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace. King Hanye lifted her head and smiled. King Shui poured tea for himself when he suddenly stopped. He looked at King Hanye with a shocked expression. The amalgamation of the Sunset Palace and Sea King Palace was already an extremely unexpected decision. He didn't think that the Sunset Sea King Palace would want to merge with the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace now after that. The amalgamation of two sects wasn't that simple of a matter. Moreover, it wasn't a decision one sect lord would be able to make by himself. However, now that King Hanye had casually spoke her intention, it was clear how much control she had over the Dragon Wolf Palace. However, the duration in which King Hanye was in control of Dragon Wolf Palace was too short. In normal circumstances, no one would do such a thing like that. He put down his cup and shook his head, you have just become the palace mistress of Dragon Wolf Palace. Doing this isn't the best choice right now. 
Why don't you settle for an alliance? Some things are very simple and not as difficult or complicated as you imagine. I have the say for Dragon Wolf Palace now, and no one will object against my idea regardless of the decisions I make. King Hanye said, confidently. Even though King Hanye said it like that, there was no amalgamation in the end. There wasn't any covenant either. Everyone understood in their hearts, so some of the conducts were omitted. He brought out some wine and cooked up a few dishes as a sort of celebration. Yi Ye Jiang attended the feast too. Her slightly bulging stomach did not affect her beauty in the slightest. As a matter of fact, she seemed to have gained additional points of maternal charm and purity, which caused the other three ladies to become envious of her. Anyone would be able to see how happy Yi Ye Jiang was at the moment. Three months later, King Shui was waiting outside at the small courtyard. The Sunset Palace mistress and Miyun Chinge were there as well. Don't worry, Jiang will be fine. The Sunset Palace mistress consoled King Shui when she saw the worried expression on his face. Ten months of pregnancy. This wasn't the first time King Shui had been through it in his entire life. His eldest children were already adults, so he wasn't particularly worried. However, he had no idea why he would still feel a bit flustered. He couldn't calm down no matter what. He was the best physician out there, so he knew that Yi A Jiang would be fine and would be able to give birth without a problem. Wah! As soon as the distinct baby cry rang out, King Shui felt relieved. However, at that very moment, a familiar sensation rushed to his head, as if there was something new. Despite the sensation, he couldn't care less about it and went straight into the room. A female physician from the water tribe was the one responsible for assisting Yi A Jiang in giving birth. There was another female disciple of the physician who was currently cradling the child in her arms. When she saw King Shui entering the room, she said ecstatically, Congratulations, sir. It's a boy. King Shui took the little guy wrapped in cotton cloth into his arms. His son's eyes were as bright as a pearl. They were pure and uncontaminated. As King Shui cradled his son in his arms, the child did not cry. In fact, he quietly looked at King Shui without making a fuss. His skin was smooth and fair, much like Yi A Jiang's skin. He was a boy, yet he seemed delicate like a girl. King Shui cradled him as he sat beside Yi A Jiang, the Sunset Palace mistress, Miyun Chinge, and King Hanye had also arrived. However, they didn't go inside hastily, as they knew that this was the perfect time to let King Shui bond with Yi A Jiang. King Shui, let me take a look. Yi A Jiang was looking a bit pale. Yi A Jiang's cultivation was undeniably strong. Even though she had just given birth to her child, she wasn't as weak as the ordinary women in King Shui's past life. Even so, her origin key had been severely injured. She would need to rest for three days if she wanted to get out of bed just like a normal person would after giving birth to a child. King Shui handed the little guy over to Yi A Jiang and placed a pillow behind her back as a support so she could lie down. Yi A Jiang seemed remarkably gentle as she cradled her child in her arms. Seeing how she currently was, King Shui felt quite happy. This was a type of satisfaction that words could hardly describe. After a long while, Yi A Jiang finally lifted her head and noticed that King Shui was still looking at her with utmost bliss, which caused her cheeks to flush in red. She felt warm in her heart. This was her man, and this child was their son. This was a family to her. Now that your eyes are all focused on him, I am forced to stand on the sideline. King Shui chuckled. Pick a name for our child. Yi A Jiang smiled. She didn't respond to King Shui's words, 
because she knew he was only trying to tease her. This child is quite delicate. I believe he will be more good-looking than a girl once he grows up. Let's give him a tough-sounding name. King Shui suggested. Since he's delicate, why don't we call him King Shu? Ye Jiang proposed as she looked at the little fellow. King Shui rubbed his forehead and thought that this name sounded quite feminine. However, there was an emperor from ancient history in his past life, who was also named Xu. After considering the name for a while, he said, very well. This name is good too. It has a good meaning as well. What came next was hilarious to King Shui. Ye Jiang wanted to breastfeed her child and told King Shui to leave her in private. After a few moments of bashful gestures, she began to tell him of her intention, which caused King Shui to smile. I have sucked on it before. Why are you still embarrassed about me seeing it? Go die. King Shui was driven out by Ye Jiang, right where the three ladies were standing. When he saw them outside, they looked at him in amusement. This caused King Shui to become quite embarrassed. He had forgotten that they were outside earlier. Even though his voice wasn't that loud, the three ladies were able to listen to their conversation very clearly due to their cultivation base. Miyun Chingye was indifferent while King Hanye was bewitching in both ways. King Shui almost threw away his soul because of one look from King Hanye. Only now he knew what it meant to be enchanted by a person. This devilish woman was in possession of the Nine Yin body. In a sense, she was truly able to acquire the soul charming skill after all these years of cultivation. The Sunset Palace mistress giggled, you can let your child rob it from you next time. King Shui had always been quite thick-skinned, but at that moment, his face was flushed in red. Not only was this lovely mature woman charming, she was also bold. King Shui wished he could sink into the ground from shame. He could only pretend he didn't hear her and said, I will go and make something as a supplement for Ye Jiang. After King Shui left, the three ladies went inside and naturally began to joke around when they saw Ye Jiang. Ye Jiang was able to hear their conversation even from inside the room. However, the three ladies were now focused on the child. Each of them took turns as they cradled the child in their arms. As we have agreed, the three of us will be his foster mothers from now on. The Sunset Palace mistress said to Ye Jiang as she played with the little fellow. This will be his good fortune. Ye Jiang said in a benevolence tone. Not long after that, King Shui brought in steaming tiger bone soup as he walked in the room. Even though he felt a bit awkward, the conversation topic was naturally extended due to the presence of a baby. Besides, everyone knew the Sunset Palace mistress's behavior, so everything went back to normal very quickly. Chapter 1699, Dragon Form, Nine Yang Dragon Soul. Today was a joyful yet busy day. Fortunately, all of them were not ordinary people. There was no need to stay in confinement following childbirth, as they were able to recuperate quite fast and swiftly. Even so, Ye Jiang fell asleep soon after her childbirth. Her child was asleep too. Most children would spend the majority of their time sleeping anyways. I will take care of things here. Just go run your errands. The Sunset Palace mistress said to King Shui. Let me do it. Besides, I don't have anything to do. King Shui shook his head as he smiled in reply. Ye Jiang was, after all, his woman. Taking care of her was naturally his responsibility. You're just a man. I still think it's better for us to handle this sort of thing. Come on, just listen to me. Go. The Sunset Palace mistress did not allow King Shui to continue and shoved him out of the room quickly. King Shui laughed helplessly and did not persist in staying further. In any case, 
No one could possibly hide anything from him in this small courtyard. After being hustled away, he went straight to a building nearby. There were four small buildings situated in the small courtyard. Each of them was three stories high and their floor spaces were relatively sufficient. The courtyards of quadrangles had the same arrangements, except that they had three courtyards in the front, middle, and back. Four buildings stood opposite one another. King Shui and Ye Jiang were the only ones living here. However, the three ladies were now living inside the building, which was the same one that Ye Jiang was currently living in. Four of them couldn't even fill one story as the space inside was sufficient. After walking into a room, King Shui remembered that he had a reaction in his body the moment his child was born. It wasn't until now that he decided to check his body for the reaction. Now that he had the time, he couldn't help but quickly enter into his own sea of consciousness. This time around, he discovered that his power had once again been purified aplenty. Moreover, he was able to discover what had been added to his sea of consciousness very quickly. The dragon form of the nine animals mimicry technique had been awakened. This was the last form of the nine animals mimicry technique, and the most mysterious one among them all. The dragon form had finally awakened after being dormant for a long time. King Shui was particularly excited and couldn't wait to see what kind of techniques he could learn right now. Nine Yang Dragon Soul. This could potentially increase the might of the heavenly technique and the sure kill technique once it has been successfully cultivated. The prowess of this ability would be affected by the level increase in realm. Dragon Claw Crushing Gold Chant. A pair of mysterious air fists that were both powerful and magical could bypass a definite amount of defense, which was effective in landing a severe blow to an opponent. The prowess of this technique could be affected by the increase in realm. King Shui's physical strength had currently reached about 100,000 sun. He hadn't had any improvement to his strength initially. But after the awakening of the dragon form, his power had received a significant boost. Under the influence of a powerful heavenly technique and a few treasures, his strength would be able to reach to the force of 4,000. King Shui's previous abilities and techniques had already been integrated into his body like the Heart of Rock, which had already been integrated into his seven-colored pellet. This was also considered a type of breakthrough in which the cultivation had reached its limit. As he watched the newly formed dragon form, the nine yang dragon soul and dragon claw crushing gold chant were definitely techniques of the legendary level at the very least. However, he wasn't able to control these techniques straight away like he used to. Even if he was able to control them for only a little bit, it would be great. Unfortunately for him, these techniques were completely foreign. In spite of that, King Shui wasn't particularly worried. He could guarantee that he would be able to control these techniques well. The Nine Animals Mimicry Technique was considered an inheritance ability. King Shui was confident that he would be able to master the cultivation of these techniques in the shortest amount of time possible. After all, this was his own inheritance. The Nine Yang Dragon Soul was a spirit of the dragon form. This was the very foundation of the form, which could even affect the cultivation of the next battle technique. Because of that, he had to train hard for this technique. The nine yang in front of its name made King Shui think of his own nine yang body. He had a feeling that there would be some effect, regardless. When he saw the dragon claw crushing gold chant, his eyes lit up. He felt that this battle technique would definitely bring a great effect when combined with the Emperor's key, Art of Pursuing, Heavenly Talisman, and Vajra Subdues Demon, perhaps even more terrifying than he had expected. He would be able to leave his opponents in a state of dejection until they died. When King Shui imagined that scenario, he became excited. 
He could not turn away from the scenario of a powerful martial warrior being weakened and then wounded by his technique that could ignore his opponent's defense. King Shui had the time now, so he directly went into the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. This was the advantage to this realm now. One day in the real world was equivalent to half a year's worth of time. King Shui practiced the chant of the Nine Yang Dragon Soul first. When he took a look of the chant, he was able to realize the function of the Nine Yang. Only those with Nine Yang bodies would be able to cultivate the domineering Nine Yang Dragon Soul to its peak. Other people would never be able to unleash even half its power. During his cultivation, he was also able to discover the terror of the Nine Yang body. This might be related to his inheritance too. Moreover, King Shui's speed in cultivating the Nine Yang Dragon's soul could only be described with the word, terrifying. This was considered an unusual cultivation, as he was able to grasp the important point very quickly. After that, he would only have to concentrate on the chant and allow the origin key and key of Nine Yang to form the force of the dragon soul. As the time went by slowly, the energy that had been accumulated in his body circulated again and again while being condensed bit by bit. This wasn't about whether this process could fail, but whether it could succeed or not. King Shui had no idea what success looked like but he would definitely know the moment he succeeded. He was able to perform the incantations of the Nine Yang Dragon Soul with ease after he had become proficient in its mastery. After an unknown period of time, a distinct sound rang out, as if something had opened up. After that, a mysterious energy surged from within his body, just like ripples that were caused by throwing a rock down in stagnant water. A slightly weak yet domineering force began to swell up slowly, which then extended throughout his entire body. Did he succeed? King Shui couldn't confirm it himself, but his intuition told him that he had indeed succeeded, albeit in terms of barely mastering part of it. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to increase his power in just a short time. This was the first time King Shui had used up all the time within the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal since he had upgraded the realm to ninth grade. His progress was satisfactory. If he continued to keep up the pace, he should be able to truly master the cultivation in just a few days. When he got out of the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal, the sky was beginning to grow darker. As he walked toward Ye Jiang's room, he saw the three ladies chattering about something happily, while the little guy was still fast asleep. King Shui then sat beside Yi A Jiang's bed. Her body had already recovered quite swiftly, as she was able to get down from her bed without a problem. She had been pregnant for ten months, and now that she had already given birth to her son, she seemed much more relaxed. Ever since King Hanye had assumed control of the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace, King Shui was subsequently promoted to become the protector of the Dragon Wolf Palace. Even though King Hanye had mentioned that she would form an alliance with the Sunset Sea King Palace, this idea was quickly rejected by King Shui. He felt that the current status of both palaces was good enough for now. King Hanye had been in control of the Dragon Wolf Palace for three months already. The old ancestor of Dragon Wolf Palace was none other than King Hanye's master. The reason that King Hanye was able to stand here today was because of her master. Her master held an important place in her heart, much like how King Shui was important to her. On the surface, it seemed that Dragon Wolf Palace was controlled by King Hanye and her master. Her master was already the old ancestor of the Dragon Wolf Palace. King Shui had never seen King Hanye's master before, even after he had become the Dragon Wolf Palace's protector. He only knew that she had secluded herself to cultivate. The next day, 
King Shui organized a banquet at the Sunset Sea King Palace and invited a few important figures from the palace to attend the feast. This was a custom in this world. A baby shower was the theme, due to the birth of his son. One must observe the customs of the world and follow them. King Shui did not reject the idea of it and took the chance to increase bonds by gathering people together. Moreover, this was an occasion worth celebrating. This banquet went on for three days, which also meant that the baby shower was held for three days straight. The majority of the guests were people from the nearby sea area, who intended to curry favor with the Sunset Sea King Palace. Chapter 1700 Charming and Alluring King Hanye, Enticed. Yi A Jiang fully recovered in just three days. The constitutions of the women in the portraits of beauty were generally strong. Their powers were considered phenomenal too. Even so, she never went out of the small courtyard during her full recuperation. Once Yi A Jiang had recovered, King Hanye went back to Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace, as she still had a bunch of things awaiting her to settle. She would still be very busy considering that she had to handle such a hefty power. There weren't any big problems. Smaller problems, however, kept pouring in endlessly. King Shui decided to send her back to the palace. Both of them did not say a word during their journey, causing the atmosphere between them to become slightly awkward. King Hanye behaved naturally, yet she would turn her gaze to King Shui at times. They had met each other several times before. During their last meeting, they had a lot to talk about. As time went by, they were able to relive the scenario between the two of them, little by little. Unfortunately, besides the charming dream from before, there was nothing else. What? Don't you have anything to say after seeing me? King Hanye stopped and glared at King Shui. She was calm, yet with her natural femininity and overall charm, her presence was a huge seduction even just standing there. I don't feel like talking when I see you. I fear something will happen even by looking at you. King Shui smiled. He didn't like this kind of atmosphere, which was why he had hoped to use this sort of method to liven up the atmosphere even by a little. Something did happen between us a long time ago. King Hanye did not smile, but she wasn't angry either. Even though she did not smile, there seemed to be a radiance of a smile beneath her expression. When was that? King Shui asked, rhetorically. Humph, stop acting confused. I won't force you or anything. You can't possibly be that scared, right? Don't tell me you are feeling guilty. Are you? King Hanye took two steps forward and stopped in front of King Shui. The distance between them was just less than half a foot away. The smell of her exquisite fragrance thrilled his nostrils. Most importantly, King Hanye's voluptuous breasts almost touched his chest. King Hanye was shorter than King Shui by half a head. She tilted her head slightly upward. Her beautiful eyes seemed like they were rippling with mystified water as her movements and expressions seemed to be inviting him in for a sampling or taste. Suddenly, King Shui's head was uncontrollably fuzzy. When he regained his consciousness, he realized he was hugging King Hanye's delicate body and his mouth was already planted unto her lips. King Shui was going crazy in his head. As he was about to let go of his hands and retreat, he realized that King Hanye was already embracing him and even had her sweet tongue awkwardly inserted into his mouth. A smooth, delicate fragrance and an indescribable captivating taste made King Shui forget himself for a while. If a man decided to retreat from a woman's initiative, then he wouldn't be a real man at all. Moreover, this woman had liked him since a long time ago. Of course, King Shui had some feelings for her. Any man would like a unique woman who could captivate an entire city with her elegance and talent like her. On top of that, 
Judging by the previous experiences, it would be better to let some things progress naturally. King Shui greedily sucked on her tongue, allowing the refreshing taste to infatuate his mind. He embraced King Hanye with both of his hands. The pressure on his chest felt as if his body was about to soar to the sky. Most importantly, King Hanye's awkward kiss allowed King Shui to understand that this talented woman hadn't had physical contact with a man for a very long time. He didn't even resist his instincts, which clearly explained what he was thinking right now. The doubts he had before had dissipated completely from his heart. The most concerning thing in the mind of a woman like her was her own body. She would rather let herself die than compromise herself for the interest of the situation. King Shui was very fond of the wonderful sensation on his palms as he gently squeezed her voluptuous butt. King Hanye slightly gasped for breath as she pushed away King Shui. Her face was flushed in red, seemingly enjoying the moment as she gazed at him. At that moment, King Shui couldn't resist the charm emanating from her natural femininity. In the next moment, he quickly extended his arms and groped her breasts. King Hanye moaned from his touch. King Shui quickly let out an awkward laugh as he let go of his hands and slightly regained his composure. You are a vixen. I can't resist you. Is it painful? Do you want me to give you a bit of massage? King Hanye looked back at him with misty eyes. It wasn't intentional when she showed him her enchanting expression, as it was caused naturally from her bones. She puffed and said, You are rough. King Shui held onto her hand, embarrassed. He felt a bit sorry for his actions. After all, he did use too much force when he had groped her. However, when he realized that King Hanye wasn't angry at all, he felt a bit happy. A woman would make herself beautiful for her lover, after all. King Shui's previous boorish act proved that she was at least attracted to this man. As for love, anyone would know that when one person liked the other to the limit, it would become love. Even so, it would require time to come into fruition. King Hanye embraced King Shui's neck and slowly leaned on him. I've waited for this day for so long, but a blockhead like you never seemed to understand that. Or maybe you just don't like me at all. My young lady, there aren't any normal men in this world who wouldn't like you. I already have a woman, and not just one. I was just afraid you would be bothered by this. Since he had openly talked about it, he didn't make it feel sentimental anymore. He was telling the truth. Anyone would want to conquer a beautiful woman, but she didn't want the previous women to feel bothered, and she didn't want future women to feel bothered either. Do you really think that we don't know how a man behaves? Since we like you so much, we will overlook this, at the very least. This kind of concept has been changing everyone in the world without them noticing. It's the most normal phenomenon. An excellent man having one woman in his life is the rarest sight in this world. Then, are you disturbed by it? King Shui actually knew the answer already. He felt quite at ease right now. The barrier between men and women was akin to a piece of paper. Once the paper had been pierced through, they would become like one single person. I would feel more disturbed if I follow someone else. If you don't want me, then I won't find other men. So this is a good deal only for you. King Hanye smiled. King Shui extended his hand and slapped her butt. The distinct sound felt as if it could charm him further. He then said, feeling speechless, what do you mean by that? Why is it a good deal only for me? All right, big brother, I'm wrong. I won't do it again. King Hanye said, slightly pouting with a pitiful expression. King Shui could only force a laugh when he saw her expression. Even though this vixen was young, because of her cultivation techniques and her knowledge on how to please a man, a few words from her were able to rouse a reaction from King Shui easily. 
an aggressive one at that. King Shui was sure that his concentration did not become weak. Even though he wasn't exactly a gentleman, he realized that he couldn't suppress his inner flame even if he tried very hard to. However, this type of flame was at another critical point, but not to the extent of releasing the beast within him. Even if that was the case, it didn't feel very comfortable. King Hanye knew King Shui had a bodily reaction. After all, there was a hard thing pointing at her lower abdomen. She wasn't actually that calm as her appearance showed because she was also nervous, deep inside. Let's go. I will escort you. If we keep going like this, I'm afraid I might not be able to resist myself and eat you up. King Shui pulled King Hanye by her hand and headed toward Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace. King Hanye curled a faint smile on her mouth. She had an indescribable charm and elegance within her, and she wasn't a woman that those with just a bewitching aura could compare to. Although she was charming, there was a sense of purity in her appeal. She was elegant, yet dignified as well. Most of the time, she would become a little lady, making others want to protect her at all costs. King Shui walked into Dragon Wolf Palace with her together. Even though it was his first time coming here, it didn't feel unfamiliar to him. When the spirit fish came here last time, he was able to see a lot of things here through it. Let's go. Let me take you to see my master. She is a very kind old woman. King Hanye would completely relax whenever she mentioned her master, just like how a child would with her parents. All right. King Shui also wanted to meet this old woman. After all, she was the one who helped King Hanye. Otherwise, no one would know what could possibly happen to King Hanye herself. The highest structure in the Eastern Peak Dragon Wolf Palace was a dragon wolf statue about a thousand meters high. It stood high and mighty. One would feel a sense of suppression upon lifting up his head to look at it. If he had to view the statue using his perception of his past life, it would be impossible to understand how this structure was built in the first place. According to the legends, this dragon wolf statue is said to have been formed by a real dragon wolf. They say it is for the sake of protecting the dragon wolf palace for all time. King Shui, do you think it's true? King Hanye asked with a smile. At that moment, the two of them were no longer holding hands. It doesn't matter whether it is real or not. If it can really protect the dragon wolf palace, then that's great. King Shui replied as he looked at the dragon wolf statue. He actually didn't believe that this statue was formed by a real dragon wolf. We're here. Master lives here. Let's go in. They arrived to a secluded, isolated small courtyard when she said that. There were no guards to be seen. King Shui only realized that this place was actually huge when he entered the courtyard. It was extremely secluded. There were various flora and fauna inside the courtyard, including a variety of fish ponds and simulated boulders. Even so, they were not extravagant but extremely cozy. An old woman with snow-white hair and white clothes was currently trimming the plants with a pair of scissors. She was solemn as she trimmed those flowers without being affected by the surroundings in the slightest. King Hanye looked at the old woman with saturated gentleness. It was a non-verbal act of mellow feelings. King Shui stood there quietly as he accompanied King Hanye by her side. He knew that this old woman definitely realized King Hanye had arrived, but didn't intend to turn around immediately to affirm that it was really her. After the time for a stick of incense to burn was up, the old woman finally turned around. It was at this moment that King Shui was able to see her face clearly. The old woman's face didn't seem like she had aged that much, yet there were deep wrinkles visible all over. In fact, those wrinkles made her seem more amiable than ever. Master, 
King Hanye happily ran over to hug the old woman's wrist when she saw her turning around. Looking at her cheerful appearance, King Hanye seemed like a child who had found her parents. Everyone had their own safe harbor that only belonged to them. King Shui's safe harbor was his home. Actually, most people considered their home to be their safe harbor. However, there would be some exceptions to their choices, like lovers or concubines. The old woman smiled when she saw King Hanye. She then walked toward King Shui with her, prompting King Shui to quickly move two steps forward and greet, your junior respectfully greets senior. King Shui used the most common etiquette to greet her. Upon seeing King Shui, the old woman seemed particularly happy, and was very curious as well. She gazed thoughtfully at King Shui with her wise eyes and said, You and Ching Er are born to be a pair. Only you can endure her. What are you saying, master? King Hanye was a woman who had not been sexually active, after all. So she was a bit embarrassed. King Shui was shocked when he realized an important fact. While he had the nine yang body, King Hanye had the nine yin body. The old woman was right. Just by the old woman's perception alone, it was enough to justify how terrifying her power was. I have another matter that I would like Senior to decide for us. I would like you to give your approval in regards to Ye and I. King Shui said, straightforwardly, Ha ha, you are a smart person. If I disapprove of it, you will definitely call me a melodramatic woman. All in all, due to the constitution of your bodies, I have nothing to worry about. I just hope you can promise me one thing. The old woman said, contentedly. Chapter 1701. She was betrothed to others, Watermoon Cavern. Senior, please say it. As long as it is within my ability, I will never decline. King Shui said promptly. Ye yeah is an unfortunate child. I hope you can treat her well. The old woman looked at King Shui seriously. That statement was solemn, but also did not contain any sense of strictness, so it wouldn't cause unease. King Shui felt conflicted today about kissing King Hanye muddle-headedly. As he arrived here, he unexpectedly decided things with King Hanye. Everything seemed to have been prepared well beforehand. King Shui definitely knew that it wasn't a deliberate plan with everything being such a coincidence. Most importantly, the old lady was strong enough to see his constitution in one glance. As she said, King Hanye and he were perfectly made for together. Under normal circumstances, any obstacles could hardly prevent it once they met. The constitution itself for both of them was the greatest temptation towards one another. This was something unexplainable. Rest assured, senior, as long as I'm alive, I won't let anything hurt ye. King Shui said with a straight face. I trust you. Although I'm already an old lady, I am still confident in my judgments. Plus, yeah, this girl has been thinking about you. Master, what are you saying? Aren't you afraid of me getting teased? Please don't say that. King Hanye interrupted the old lady shyly. After all, girls were sensitive. All right, I'll stop talking. The old woman was apparently over the moon. It was pleasing to look at King Hanye's dainty manner. It was rare to see her acting like this. She would only behave in this way in front of the man she liked. King Shui, can you see anything peculiar about my flowers and plants? The old lady shifted her topic, pointing at a garden nearby. King Shui smiled after looking around. In fact, he noticed the situation the moment he stepped into this place. The old lady should have been a master of formations. The display here was a formation. Furthermore, it was a layered formation. Eight trigrams orientation in all directions, blossoms towards the south. There are gates of life and death. Old lady, 
This courtyard is a gate of death. Yet, there's another unique formation inside. King Shui said slowly, observing the surroundings. Any method to decode it? Old lady kept smiling at King Shui. Is this supposed to be difficult? King Shui's shadow flashed at once. In a glimpse, he destroyed several plants. He moved swiftly and naturally and soon, he returned to his former position in a methodical order. King Shui knew that the old lady had a slightly different thought previously. Perhaps because of him or the Nine Yang body, or else, there would have been a battle at the moment. King Shui felt that the old lady wasn't easy to confront with his current strength. He wasn't certain but he believed he could escape unscathed. That was only an assumption. Not bad. It's surprising that you're also a great master of formations. Old lady was astonished. Not many knew that King Shui mastered formations here. King Shui had never seen anyone with greater attainment in formations to date. Even the old lady's attainments before him were child's play in formations compared to King Shui's. It's not that great. I have a combination of maze formation and killing formation here. We can study it if you're interested. It's not bad. King Shui took out a picture scroll. Sure. I like formations the most. Unfortunately, I'm not gifted. The three of them headed towards a room close by while talking. King Hanye didn't talk much. Most of the times, it was King Shui and the old lady speaking. The old lady seemed doddering and feeble as if a blow of wind could make her fall. However, only those who were familiar knew how intimidating and powerful her strength was. It wasn't really spacious yet there was a slight void in the living room due to the scarcity of furniture pieces displayed. The old lady was hardly visited by any guests. Not because they didn't want to, but the old lady didn't welcome any interruptions. Hence, there wasn't even a single servant. Only King Hanye could have free access in this place. King Hanye boiled a pot of tea and filled cups for three of them. The old lady became more satisfied as she observed King Shui. She was happy for King Hanye. King Shui, now that I don't take you as an outsider, I wish you can make yourself at home. Yeah is just like my child. She is my heir in my heart. The Dragon Wolf Palace is nothing compared to Yeah. King Shui understood her words meaning. He, too, felt the sincerity in her words. Most importantly, King Shui realized that she valued family bonds very much. To be able to prioritize family love at this age, King Shui admired it the most and respected this old lady for that reason. You're the master of Ye, so you're my senior, King Shui smiled at the old lady. Ho ho, well, it's finally quiet in Dragon Wolf Palace now. King Shui, I have to inform you something. I have already betrothed Ye to someone. Master, King Shui was taken aback and stared at the old lady as she gave a hand sign to stop King Hanye from talking. She continued, Ye didn't know this. I was desperate and forced to do so. It was only a delaying move and unfortunately, there weren't any solutions all these while. I promised to be ready in ten years and it has already been more than eight years now. Senior, which force made you compromise? King Shui asked curiously. The Watermoon Cavern. It's the Watermoon Cavern. King Hanye yelled out of astonishment, gazing at the old lady. King Shui frowned as he looked at the old lady, then at King Hanye. The Watermoon Cavern must be very powerful then. Not only they are powerful, we are way behind them and the gap is huge. Old lady sighed. Senior, I don't understand. If they are so powerful, why would they wait for ten years? King Shui thought it was uncommon to have a ten-year promise if the force was formidable and admired King Hanye at the same time. They knew of Ye's constitution and could do nothing. However, 
If their inherited technique, wave moon yang movement, is practiced up to the lower eighth layer, it would be considered the greatest and the most unbending. If I'm not mistaken, the water moon cavern lord could practice up to the eighth layer in ten years. That was why he could wait, said the old lady after pondering. King Hanye appeared upset. She knew the strength of the Watermoon Cavern could not be deterred by the Dragon Wolf Palace. The discrepancy was simply too wide. Putting her head up, she noticed King Shui was watching her too. He didn't seem too worried as he gently smiled. This pacified her heart substantially. Senior, I would like to know the strengths of the Watermoon Cavern in detail. Replied King Shui after a while. I have some news here but it's not completed. Chapter 1702. Yin Yang Pill. Uncontrollable. Please tell me. Senior. King Shui honestly wanted to know. Absolutely. I would have told you even if you didn't ask. The Watermoon Cavern Lord is a golden dragon who has achieved Dao, the actual tribe of dragons. Coincidentally, he swallowed a golden turtle crimson pellet and hence achieved an unprecedented strength. He wanted to marry Ye because he discovered her nine yin body. King Shui knew of the golden turtle crimson pellet. The golden turtle was a mystical turtle species in nature. They were similar to the golden treasure pig and harmless by nature, yet, at the same time, they could hardly be harmed. Golden turtles, especially those aged over 10,000 years, would produce the golden pellet. This was the result of the condensation of the spiritual influence from heaven and earth, combined with the golden turtle's own essence. It was the strongest and the most concentrated yang. Thus, it was considered to be the most precious treasure to humans and gold demonic beasts. As the old lady said earlier, the Watermoon Cavern Lord wanted to marry King Hanye for her nine yin body. The Watermoon Cavern Lord was the strongest and the one with the most yang, while the nine yin body had the most yin. When yin yang merged, strength and gentleness coupled, creating a very high probability chance for him to attain a whole new realm. Naturally, it was extremely hazardous to do so. Otherwise, he wouldn't have waited for ten years. The greater the risks, the greater the benefits. It was applicable in many situations. In this case, he was probably betting his own life. Nevertheless, there was no end to people's greed. They were never contented and there were too many of them who didn't know when to stop and lost their own lives because of it. Unfortunately, no one was capable of predicting the future in this world. Hence, it was inevitable. Even so, gamblers were insane in the sense that they could go all out in grasping on the slightest hope. They would either succeed or die trying. The old lady didn't state the strength of that person clearly, but King Shui knew. If even the capable old lady couldn't turn this Watermoon Cavern Lord down, then his strength must be undeniably baffling. After the Watermoon Cavern Lord, the strongest ones are the two guardians. They are from the blood of the ancient invisible dragons who mastered the method of concealing themselves. Not only they could hide their shadows, they could also hide their odors and spiritual senses, making it hard to trace them even for those who are stronger. They are the kings of darkness, walking and dancing in the shadows. Their murders were pure craftsmanship. King Shui knew there were a lot of mystical tribes in this world, and that the invisible dragon was an ancient tribe. They had a proud bloodline and marvelous talents. They were destined to outshine ordinary men as they grew up. Anyway, King Shui recalled his strongest ability of awareness and instinct. He was uncertain if he could utilize it to track the opponent's existence. If he could then he wouldn't be threatened by the invisible dragons. Many people feared the invisible dragons. They lived in darkness. They could appear out of nowhere and give you a killing blow at any time. To be able to raid was their pride. 
they would try to achieve their goals by all means. The invisible dragons weren't many. Most people had never met them and there were very few who knew of their existence. Yet, they were well known among the strong warriors, as they themselves ranked high on the list of powerful entities. There are also 18 cave kings who came from different tribes. Still, it's possible to trace their origins based on their bloodlines. They have different niches, stronger warriors who lost in their hands could be found everywhere. The old lady didn't say much, but it was very informative to King Shui. He had been listening carefully until the old lady stopped. Then he asked, did they come to the Dragon Wolf Palace halfway? No, aren't they worried that Ye would meet the man she likes then? King Shui asked, giggling. Do you think every man in this world is like you? The Watermoon Cavern Lord is no ordinary man. He knows about the Nine Yin body. Because not many people have such a constitution, he is not worried. In fact, I'm worried that Ye would be single forever. Old lady shook her head. King Hanye's face flushed red. Her half-pleased and half-embarrassed expression, and those affectionate eyes heated up King Shui's heart. King Hanye blinked sneakily as she saw King Shui's behavior. Her cute and flirtatious look almost made King Shui lose control. He couldn't misbehave when the old lady was around. He just didn't expect King Hanye's bold actions. He would take his revenge afterward. King Shui was rather concerned. Still, there was another year left. More than one year provided nothing else popped up. If Watermoon Cavern Lord advanced the time, then he would have no choice. King Shui was contemplating as the old lady slowly spurt out these words with a smile. King Shui, I can help you boost your strength, but the practical increment depends on your own fortune. Oh, can you? King Shui didn't lay much hope in the old lady's offer. He understood his own body, so he didn't wish too fervently. I once got a pair of pills, the yin-yang pills. Do you know the reason behind Ye's rapid boost in strength? That's because she consumed the extreme yin righteous pill. There's another extreme yang righteous pill. It's a predestined affinity for us to be here today. I'll give it to you. Only you could bring out its greatest effect. While speaking, she took out a dated, unadorned grayish chest. It was as big as a fist covered by trails of ages, and marked with some ancient patterns. It wasn't attractive. Yet, it felt heavy. King Shui observed the old lady's calm expression. While delighted, he received the chest and replied, Junior won't be too formal then. Family members shouldn't be too formal to each other. The old lady smiled, indicating King Shui to open it. As King Shui opened it up gently, his eyes lit up instantly. A cloud of golden chlorine residual was revolving in the chest. There were two grooves and only one of them had a golden pill in it. It was sparkling with a golden glitter, looking pure and dazzling. Another groove was empty. A stream of not so aromatic fragrance emanated. It was a faint and pleasant smell with a mild sense of spiritual influence. King Shui knew that the chlorine residual was to preserve the spiritual influence of the pills from leaking. A great item, a treasure, an absolute treasure. Raising his head, King Shui recapped it gently. Senior, this item is way too precious. The old lady waved. A sword is given to a hero. A flower is given to a beauty. There aren't many who could live up to this item except you. Then, I shall not be too formal and take it. The old lady went upstairs after explaining the method of using the extreme yang righteous pill and saying something insignificant. Only now did King Shui realize that it had been a very long period. King Shui and King Hanye left the courtyard after the old lady had gone upstairs. King Hanye was staying in the vicinity. She had a residence in the most lavish place as a mistress. 
However, she usually stayed in a courtyard near to the old lady. She could meditate here since it was isolated and quiet. King Shui, I wasn't hiding it from you. I truly didn't know this matter. She was referring to the engagement with the Watermoon Cavern Lord. I don't blame you. You are my woman now and nobody could dream of taking you away. King Shui clasped King Hanye's hand tightly. He wouldn't be so petty and blame her. Furthermore, she wasn't the one to blame when she didn't even know it. I didn't blame you. Do you think I am that petty? King Shui dragged her into her courtyard. You're so nice. I'm not nice. It's as if I'm in the purgatory now. You have to rescue me. King Shui pressed her down on the couch as soon as they stepped into the living room. Ah, bastard, don't bully me. How would I bully you? You nearly got me killed just now. Your master was around. If I couldn't control myself, she would have killed me. You just said you're not petty. How come? Who asked you to be so alluring? Let me kiss you. Okay. King Shui was on top of King Hanye's frail body. The couch was big enough and not too crowded. Her alluring, incomparable, gorgeous face was right in front. Her refined and tall nose was fine and beautiful. A faded vapor covered her bright, pretty eyes. Her tiny, moist, red lips pouted and formed a charming curve. Not okay. You can't say no. King Shui lowered his head and kissed those delicate, soft lips. Don't ask for more than you can get. King Hanye said seductively. King Shui kissed her eyes, nose, chin, and neck. As he moved downwards, King Hanye held his head. It's inconvenient for me. Stop teasing me, King Hanye said, softly panting. King Shui blanked out a while, then buried his face into those perky mountains at once, rubbing vigorously. King Hanye's outfit was very thin. He could feel the reactions on her summits instantly. King Hanye dug her hands in King Shui's hair while panting. King Shui's hand didn't slow down as he ceaselessly groped those voluptuous snowballs. Across the thin fabric, King Shui sucked and gently bit the summits once. King Hanye shivered for a second and forced King Shui's head to a stop. She said in a pleading tone, King Shui, your constitution is my nemesis. I can't resist you, but I can't give it to you now. Are you worried that my body can't take it? King Shui looked up to this indolent and tempting woman. Of course not. Just listen to me once. King Hanye touched his face. That soft whisper made King Shui begin another round of fondling. Since the clothing barrier could no longer satisfy him, he stuck his hand beneath and grabbed the warm and smooth pair, causing King Hanye to moan softly. King Shui felt this in his dreams before, though it had been ages. No matter how realistic the dream was, it wasn't as impactful as the reality. Plus, he was still burning with desire after such a long duration even though King Hanye was already his woman. All of a sudden, King Hanye pushed King Shui away and sat upright. She grabbed both of his hands to make him pause, then she shook her head. King Shui sensed his immense desire today and smiled helplessly. Am I rather extreme today? I like you this way. The former you was annoying. King Shui was unsure if his resistance had deteriorated or the woman before him had become more alluring. King Shui's constitution was her nemesis. It was the same for King Hanye's constitution as well. It was hard for them to keep out from a burning affair up until today. Chapter 1703. The Feeling of Home, Warmth. King Shui guessed that King Hanye was worried about the current dangers. Of course, she could be feeling scared as well. Moreover, a lady who took great care of her own chastity wouldn't be able to take action immediately, even if she were to encounter a man that she liked. The humans in the world is made up of men and women. In life, 
The matter between men and women was indispensable to life. However, it didn't all revolve around it. This matter was an indispensable condiment of life. Of course, humans used this same method to engage in reproduction. King Shui also knew why King Hanye had said that he was detestable in the past. Back then, while it was said that he couldn't be bothered with her, others could tell that he was avoiding her. To a lady with unrivaled beauty, moreover one who had taken the initiative, it was a huge blow. Are you angry with me for what I had done in the past? King Shui and King Hanye sat next to each other on the sofa, looking a lot calmer now. Although they hadn't done anything too physical between each other, kissing and embracing can help to ease their feelings. They don't always just serve as to add fuel to the flames. If you were one of those frivolous men, there's no way that I'd have taken a liking to you. King Hanye smiled and said, You trust me so much, I might be a hypocrite, playing hard to get in order to get you one day. King Shui chuckled as he looked at this beautiful lady. If that's how it is, I'll accept it. How long were you going to keep it going? Are you sure that you'll be able to find me? You don't even know how to lie. Otherwise, you wouldn't have not tried to find me despite having been here for so many years. King Hanye sounded especially happy. Yeah, King Shui previously had also called her year when the old man was around, just like how the old man had done. However, it made him feel especially close when he addressed her in this way when there was just the two of them. King Hanye felt very warm inside. Other than her master, there was now one more person that she cared for. Him. King Hanye lifted her head and smiled charmingly as she looked at King Shui. You demoness. With a woman like you, my lifespan would be shortened by at least ten years. King Shui reached out his hand to pinch her upright nose. Are you regretting it? King Hanye smiled. Such a compliment from a man was still very effective on women. How could that be possible? I would gladly accept dying in the hands of a beautiful lady. I'd even be willing to have a hundred years taken from my lifespan, let alone ten years. You're not allowed to say such ominous things. I want you to be well. King Hanye rested her head on King Shui's shoulder. King Shui didn't stay for very long. He still needed to return to Ye Jiang. Moreover, he wanted to enjoy the blissful family life. Therefore, King Shui returned before it was dark. It was never too late to enjoy a good meal. And good things must be slowly appreciated. King Shui was not that anxious as there would still be plenty of chances in the future. Moreover, during this trip, he had gotten the extreme Yang righteous pill. This was also a surprising gain, an especially great one. King Shui thought of fate. Usually things that are unexplainable can be described as fate. In fatalism, the encounters between people is all destined and there will always be the possibility of connections being formed between people, or between people and things. By the time King Shui returned to the Sunset Palace, it was already night time. King Shui had a new secret way of returning unnoticed. After the ninth layer of the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal was unlocked, the changes to the spirit energy caused King Shui to make an astonishing discovery. He could now use the nine continent steps in the water. Upon entering Ye Jiang's room, he noticed that she was alone. Ye Jiang was now just like an ordinary person, and thus there was no need for the Sunset Palace mistress or Miyun Chinge to be by her side all the time. However, both of them were also staying in this place. When Ye Jiang saw that King Shui had returned, she broke into a happy smile. Although she hadn't said it, but she was still a little worried when King Shui was headed to the Dragon Wolf Palace. She was now at ease on seeing that King Shui had returned. You're back. Ye Jiang carried their child and walked up to King Shui. 
The little kid had only just awakened right before King Shui got back. The child was still very young and would basically be sleeping throughout the day. In King Shui's previous life, children who were this young would rarely be carried due to their weak stature. However, the situation was different in this world. The outstanding genes here gave the child a very strong body. King Shui hugged Ye Jiang with the child between them. However, Ye Jiang inhaled and said, You have King Hanye's scent on you. King Shui's face turned red. We didn't do anything. It was only right after saying this that King Shui had realized that he had let the cat out of the bag. With that, it would be even harder for Ye Jiang to believe him now. However, upon a second thought, he felt that there was a need for him to tell the others about the relationship between himself and King Hanye after all. Right now, was he lifting up a rock and getting ready to smash his own foot? Ye Jiang looked at King Shui's expression and could not hold back her smile. What did you want to do? King Shui smiled awkwardly. Jiang, I've always felt that I'm a bastard, failing to appreciate the happiness that I have. What would you do if you were in my position? Sometimes, I really feel at a loss and hate myself a lot. Ye Jiang rested her forehead against King Shui's and said, King Shui, you've given me a lot. Look at Shu Er. This is our child. He has connected the two of us together. King Shui couldn't really understand what Ye Jiang was trying to imply. He lowered his head and looked at the little kid's pure eyes that were like crystals. The child looked a lot like Ye Jiang and was beautiful, just like a girl. King Shui, you don't have to act like this. We all understand. Moreover, I still decided to become husband and wife with you, despite knowing that you have other women. I don't regret this. Even if I was to be given another chance, I would still make the same choice. We won't restrict you in any way because we know that you're very important to all of us. King Shui looked at Ye Jiang in a daze. King Shui's beliefs from his previous life had been deeply rooted in him and it was hard for him to change them in such a short time. In his previous life, there were very few women who could say and do something like this. At the very least, there was no way for King Shui to have come into contact with such women with his status in his previous life. I'm afraid that you guys would feel aggrieved. After so many years, King Shui's attitude in this area had improved a lot. However, he would still have such thoughts occasionally. It was the thoughts that had been left behind from his previous life, and it might be something that may never disappear throughout his entire lifetime. I know right now that I feel I'm the most blissful person in the world. You shouldn't say such things anymore in the future. Ye Jiang rubbed King Shui's head giving him a heartwarming feeling. The sky had just turned dark and upon knowing that Ye Jiang had yet to have dinner, King Shui immediately went to the kitchen to cook. There were still many people who would have dinner at this time. The child had fallen asleep and Ye Jiang went to place him onto the bed. When she was done and arrived at the kitchen, King Shui was already cooking. It'll be ready very soon. I'll help you. Today, you'll teach me how to cook. Ye Jiang walked over. King Shui nodded, feeling that this should be how a home should feel like. The warmth of having a wife and child. After dinner Ye Jiang went back to sleep. It hadn't been long since she had given birth and she still needed plenty of rest. King Shui slept on the couch outside but it wouldn't been long before he entered the realm of the violet jade immortal. He intended to use the extreme yang righteous pill. After knowing of the existence of the watermoon cavern, King Shui's mind hadn't been able to be at peace. He would have to face it sooner or later, and it might not even be that long of a while. Chapter 1704-8000 Dao Forces 
The elderly told King Shui that in order to consume the extreme Yang righteous pill, he would need a medicine with strong spiritual ki to act as an initiator. This would make it easier for it to be absorbed. Another thing was that the time needed to refine the medicinal properties would also be slightly longer. It'd be best to find a quiet place and get someone else to be on guard. The old man had wanted to help and guard King Shui. However, upon knowing that the time taken would be very long, he thanked and rejected the old man's kind intentions. He told the old man that he had his own methods. King Hanye also said that if he needed someone to help stand guard, she could help him as well. King Shui had the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal, and there was nothing that was more suitable than it. Moreover, he had the best item with spiritual key to be the medicinal initiator. Spring of Life King Shui slowly calmed his mind down in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. During this period of time, he had gotten a little stronger. Although it didn't seem to be much, it was quite significant to King Shui. His physical strength had increased from 80,000 suns to 100,000 suns. This increment wouldn't be considered much for other divinities, but King Shui had many martial techniques. Therefore, this increment was considered to be magnificent. Most important, the increment had come in recent times and prior to that, he hadn't made any progress for very long. The time King Shui had in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal removed all of his concerns. He was also able to calm down easily when there was no one who could come and disturb him. At the thought of the Watermoon Cavern, King Shui would become agitated. He wasn't a person who would admit his loss easily. Not only would a man have to be upright and hold his head high, he must also have his own stand and beliefs. He had his share of reverse scales that mustn't be touched and he wouldn't back off even if it was at the expense of his life. Right now, King Hanye could be considered King Shui's woman. It wasn't as if a woman would belong to someone if she had given her body to them. If that was the case, those women who worked in brothels would belong to many people. King Shui took out a cup of spring of life and then opened the small rustic box slowly. Without any hesitation, he swallowed it together with the golden key. He then finally drank the spring of life. Sitting down cross-legged, King Shui faced the eastern direction. Very soon, the golden key surrounded King Shui. It was very faint, but appeared to be very sacred, making him just like a golden Buddha statue. Right now, King Shui's body was going through tremendous changes. An extremely violent power that held the strength to destroy everything entered his body. It seemed like the power was creating new meridian channels in his body, and felt as if sharp swords had brushed by or rockets had flown through. This was an extremely painful experience, but it was something that King Shui could put up with. No matter how damaging the physical pain was, it would eventually be over. It was unlike mental anguish, which was something which would not be removed. If King Shui was given a choice, he would rather choose physical pain. He thought of King Hanye and wondered how she had felt when she took the extreme yin righteous pill. Did she feel the same amount of pain back then? However, the great pain that he felt already forced him to stop these thoughts. The seven-colored pellet in his danshan spun rapidly and a gush of nature energy continued to soar. Even the shiny paragon vessel was exuding a brilliant golden light. King Shui's eyes opened abruptly as the golden light on his body grew increasingly brighter. A circle of aura that could be seen by the naked eye brushed past and those artificial mountains and rocks instantly turned into dust. Thankfully, he was in a vacant piece of land in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. If he was around the medicinal herbs, he would have incurred huge losses. Pa! A sound that sounded like bones shattering rang out. This was actually the sounds of broken bones. 
That terrifying power had broken two of King Shui's rib bones and made him frown. This power was indeed terrifying. So terrifying that he felt that it was a little hard to bear. Opportunities and risks coexisted. Furthermore, such a sacred heavenly and earthly treasure could only be used by people who were worthy of them. When consuming items like these, there would be a certain amount of risks involved. One might even lose their life just like that if they weren't careful. Right now, King Shui had the Nine Yang Golden Body, but he hadn't successfully mastered the Nine Yang Dragon Soul. Despite so, his confinement skill was still very powerful, to the extent that they could be described as being extraordinary. Even with that, his bones were still broke from the impact. If it was someone else, this dominating power would have definitely turned them into meat paste very easily, or caused them to disappear completely. The Danshan's seven-colored pellet continued to spin increasingly faster. The glow it exuded also grew intense by the minute. Piffed. A deep and stifled sound rang out and King Shui used his inner sight to check out the seven-colored pellet in his danshan. It hadn't become bigger, but instead, shrunk to become like a bead the size of a date. The seven-colored glow was extremely brilliant, and there was an indescribable substantial feeling to it. It was as if it was the most treasured pearl in the world. King Shui could clearly sense that the power it exuded was getting more and more intense. At almost the same time, the paragon vessel in his danshan underwent some minor and strange changes. Only King Shui knew about this feeling. The paragon vessel's appearance became clearer, just like how a feeble young man had now gained muscles and looked much stronger. Of course, this was just an analogy, a feeling. The power in his body had reached a pinnacle and was starting to slowly come down. It had dashed through three nameless meridian channels, causing King Shui's abilities to become a lot stronger. A human body had countless meridian channels. What currently known to humans was only a small portion of it. The entire system could be described as a vast sea. As people said, the human body was like a small universe, and this analogy wasn't exaggerating. By the time everything calmed down, nine days had already passed. This didn't seem like a long time. But nine was considered an extreme end in numbers, and to a certain degree, it was considered to be the greatest, even when compared to taking several tens of days. There was an indescribable mystical sense to it, and was also a rule in this world. Although King Shui's bones had broken, his strong recuperative abilities had healed them. It was only that he noticed he was now covered in tainted blood and something that looked like grey fatty substance. The stench was piercing and unbearable. He took off his clothes and with a wave of his hand, destroyed them. They had completely disappeared in the air. After washing up and changing his clothes did King Shui then have the time to sense his current body's condition. Sensing his physical strength made King Shui felt a lot happier. His physical strength had now reached 150,000 suns, having increased by 50,000 suns. It wasn't overrated for the extreme Yang righteous pill to have such powers. Moving his body and intent slightly, his danshan moved. King Shui was not stunned, but instead, filled with surprise. The seven-colored pellet initially increased his powers by fifty folds, but now the pellet had increased it by sixty folds. For the paragon vessel, it changed from sixty folds to seventy folds. This change was not minor. The seven-colored pellet and the paragon vessel hadn't gone through any changes for very long so he hadn't expected to experience such a great improvement this time around. Right now, King Shui's strength had reached 8,315 Dao Force. King Shui found this a little unbelievable. Earlier on, he had only been about 4,000 Dao Force, but now, it had actually doubled. 
Sensing the overwhelming power in his body, King Shui couldn't help but start practicing the Tai Chi fist, back connecting fist, using his hands in place of hammers to perform the thousand hammer technique, or using his hand in place of swords to perform the basic sword techniques. He seemed to have forgotten everything around him and was only focusing on practicing his martial techniques. It was as if time had come to a stop and turned into an eternity. It was only after King Shui was kicked out that he realized that he had spent half a year practicing his martial arts in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. Overcome by starvation, it had been a long time since King Shui felt as if he was going to die from hunger. However, his spirits were very high. He got up and headed out to make some food. Only after gulping down his meal that he felt a lot better. No matter how strong a cultivator was, he would still need to eat. It was just that the requirement for the food intake was very low. It was already late at night and King Shui had his food in another building. He was afraid that he would disturb Ye Jiang. The child wouldn't wake up so easily. By the time he returned to the couch in the hall, it was already past 3 a.m. The moonlight was shining brightly, brightening up the room. Everything was beautiful, extremely beautiful under the moonlight. There were sounds coming from the bedroom and very soon, there were light sounds of footsteps. King Shui didn't move, but a fragrant scene entered his embrace. King Shui hugged her and kissed her beautiful lips while Ye Jiang replied to his kiss enthusiastically. She even took the initiative to probe her tender tongue into his mouth. It was a pity that it hadn't been long since Ye Jiang had given birth. Even a cultivator, a powerful one, would need some time to recover. King Shui was a miraculous physician and there weren't many problems with Ye Jiang's body. However, he still hoped that more time had passed before they went back to having sex. King Shui hugged her and didn't do anything more intimate. He was afraid that he wouldn't be able to control himself. Ye Jiang rested in King Shui's embrace, her bright eyes looking at him with a hint of embarrassment. Her transcendence appearance now had a hint of additional motherly glow. Her mature body exuded a lethal attraction. You seem to have gotten even stronger. Ye Jiang was unsure of King Shui's abilities, but she could sense that there had been some changes. King Shui shared with her the events that had happened in the Dragon Wolf Palace. He also told her about the Watermoon Cavern. At first, he had planned on keeping this from her, but now that his strength had doubled, he managed to keep his calm. We've heard of the Watermoon Cavern as well. In the ocean domain within one million li, it's considered one of the strongest influences. However, we aren't sure how strong they are exactly. Ye Jiang was a little worried. There's no need to worry. I've been through so much and traveled so far. Your man isn't someone who could be defeated so easily. King Shui tried to ease the tension in the atmosphere. You must be careful. If there's anything, please discuss it with Senior. After all, she is older and can see through things better than we can. Seeing that King Shui didn't really seem to care about this, she reminded him. King Shui had wanted to express that everything was fine and would be easy to handle, but hadn't expected her to feel that he was being complacent. He said seriously, don't worry. I can't bear to leave you guys behind. You aren't allowed to say such unlucky things. The days passed by as usual and the next day, King Shui studied his fist intent in the courtyard as if nothing had happened. It was because it was only now that he had discovered that he had already cultivated the dragon claw crushing gold chant to a considerable level of proficiency. He was only a small step away from reaching the small success stage and could be said to already have one foot in that level. Right now, he was near the arena in the main building. He was afraid that if he was in the smaller building, if anything were to happen, he might frighten the child.
bending his fingers into a grasping position, body moving in tandem with his thoughts, having the form of a jiao. Each of his steps contained powerful battle intent and explosive ki. As he continued to move along the wide arena, his hands kept on striking out. The intent was more important than the form, and the form was more important than the force exerted.